fooling around and then I just lost track of time. Bam, we're live. Oh. Greg, what's up? Susan, what's, what's up? going on, buddy? How are you this morning? Matthew, been a while. Greg, good to see you, my friend. Good to see you, buddy. Good morning, everyone. Let's see, uh, let's see the first person in here who uh, notices I'm late. Good morning. Good morning. Ciao. Hello, friends. Oh, uh, Judy. Uh, hello, friends. Uh, busy CF podcast day. Don't forget to tune in tonight. Seven on podcast. Tim Murphy uh, doing burpees. Be ready with your money. Yeah, good point. <laughs> um, okay, let me see. No, look, no. Comp oh, late. Here it is. There's always one. There's always one who wants to let me know I'm late. Son of a gun. Always one. Hey, uh, I read that article, Greg. It's good. Dude. Whole. I mean, uh, the article I'm referencing is an article. Uh, uh, it's anonymous, right? The um, the insider at Boeing. Uh, yeah. What a wild article! I uh, it's, here's here's where I where I put faith in, and we're talking about an article on a Boeing in a City Journal, published right. by Manhattan Institute, I believe. Um, it. It comports wonderfully. You know, it's, sometimes you, you can believe something because you've read other things that tell that same story. But other times, and it's even more convincing when you can see that this is a different facet of the same reality. That's what I was thinking, that second mm -hmm. part. And that's, and that's what I'm seeing here. Like, why, of course. I mean, fact is the planes are falling from the sky. And what's at play? Um, my father was always quick to blame MBAs for any kind of uh, engineering failure. And this is clearly a case of that here. Let me shut the door. What's crazy is the parallels it has to so many companies. Listen to this. At its core, we have a marginalization of the people who build stuff, the people who really work on these planes. Meaning the if people you who think the purpose of business is to make money, you can find yourself vulnerable to harebrained liberal ideas like we'll make more money if we ESG real good or DEI real nice. That there's that there's the social value inherent in those things, and they do, they 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 believe that value inheres in them naturally, which is itself odd. But uh what happens is planes start falling from the sky because the purpose of the business is not to make money. And, and the, what they had to do to get the, it, it, the reason the planes fell through the sky is not unrelated to tripling the stock price. The stock and the, and the CEO of the company, what was his term? What was it really, really talented assholes? He referred <laughs> to the, to the old engineering line. To the to the experts in manufacturing, I don't remember the exact line. It, I'll, it was I'll, something I'll, like that, and, and, he, and it was his own words in his uh, tell-all glamour biography of his genius. And what they did is they tripled the stock price, and he said that these guys, these these really talented assholes, were people that valued safety and engineering, and had no regard for the stock price. And he indeed got rid rid of those really talented assholes, <laughs> and they moved the the they moved from Everett to Chicago Sears Towers to Arlington, Virginia, to be close to the Capitol. It reminds me of Archer Daniel Midlands. They do most of their farming in Washington D.C. Someone said, <laughs> so they, they got to get Damn. close to the Capitol. I get it. You see the whole thing. They left the engineers behind. The engineers started quitting in mass. They broke the unions back and brought the assembly to unskilled workers that they trained in South Carolina. Then they subbed out big portions of the plane to, to companies that didn't even have engineering departments who in turn subbed it out, who in turn subbed it out. Oh, shit. And, the, and they, they got the prices down on everything. But again, what happened? The planes are falling out of the fucking sky. Would you fly on a Boeing right now, Greg? I think that, I think that there's a whole bunch of... Uh, uh, MBAs that ought to be just proud of themselves. <laughs> I will. I will not get on one of those planes. That political correctness has cost hundreds of lives of customers. How's that for 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 helping the bottom line of your company? Damn. 
what a what a what a master class in how to do something profoundly fucking stupid in the name of business. Hey, how many friends do you have who are actually experiencing this in real time? Listen at their at their company who don't even work at Boeing. Listen to this. DEI bureaucracy that has poisoned the culture, creating a sense of profound alienation between the people who occupy the executive suite and those who build the airplanes. That's it's that's a, like it's a, happening it's, it's everywhere. It's the implementation of racism. Uh, yes. And, and racism is – you know what I realized racism is the other day? And this is a line that you you taught me, but this works perfectly for racism. It's taking the rights from individuals and giving them to groups. That is that is what racism is. It's taking the right – it's not being happy with the right equal rights of all individuals. And so taking some rights away from individuals and giving them to groups. It, wrap yourself around this. When the left talks about democracy, they're talking about A and B deciding what C should do for D. <laughs> say say that one more time. The, the, the they, D part. Their definition of democracy on. is A and B deciding what C should do for D. And it's it's also socialism. It, it, can you? We can have you, a bill of rights. Can you give me that in practice. Democratic assholes. Can can you give me in practice what A and B are, what C are, and who D is? Can you put it plug in the people? Yeah, why is that 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 breaking up of your voice? Is that me, you, or something in between? Uh, does anyone else hear anything going uh, wrong with my voice? I, it looks like I have a strong connection. It's now it's good. Okay, hmm. but it only does it on your voice. I don't hear it from Matt, and I, it could be me. Well, I haven't anyways, allowed, I haven't allowed Matt to talk yet. <laughs> a and B could constitute damn near a majority of A, B, C, and D, right? And if you want to make it good, make A, B, and C deciding what D should do for E. Now you have it perfectly. But the, but the the problem is is that it's a formula for treading on rights while being democratic. At its core, we have a marginalization of the people who build stuff, the people who really work on the planes. I hate to say it, but that's exactly what happened. What's what happened or happened at CrossFit after he left? This is exactly it. That's that's when I read it. I was like, that's Holy true. Shit. I, this I, is I, this is a complete parallel of what's happening at CrossFit HQ and all the liberal dads that sit on t uh, Tennis Hill with me. Um. They, uh, one of them works in HR. One of them is in recruitment. They're very successful. They make a shitload of money in the tech industry. They all say that they have to stay completely quiet. It's why there's paralysis in so many companies. It's why there's paralysis in HQ. It's a complete, there's a complete cultural, um, uh, disconnect between the people who work there and the people who are quote unquote in charge. It's fat. It's fascinating. And what's crazy is more and more liberals now are falling into the alienation side. I mean, that, that thank God, that's the hope. The CEO that's stepping down at Boeing in December, which is hilarious. Um, he there was that great uh, quote from Mandreessen regarding one of the articles that we were passing around on Boeing. But anyways, this guy's part of this school of thought where the people are entirely fungible to, to the, to the enterprise. You just, you can, you can take people from any line of work and exchange them equally. And, uh, what a disaster. Uh, let me know if my voice keeps cracking. Is it, is it still cracking, Greg? No, I no, but it, it, it does at times. I'll put a finger in the air when you're, when you're <laughs> in tennis. Me. That means the ball was out by the way. If you Does go like it? this, yeah, like if someone hits it, because you have to call because there's no no judges. So you go like this. If the ball goes out of bounds, you go like this. And two fingers is my balls are out. <laughs> yeah, two fingers, two fingers right. mean something too. Uh, listen to this. Uh, um, a company cannot survive two crashes from a single aircraft type. Then CEO Dennis, and, and that's why I won't go on one. Like, will you look at planes now before you get on them and be like, Fuck. hey, I'm only getting on Airbuses? Yes. You're freaking me out. You should be freaked out, dude. I am freaked out. I got, like, a bunch of travel. I leave next week. Oh, I, you know, we did. We just uh, looked at who's got the Airbuses and, like, Delta. They're all Airbus. 
So what Delta is the airline. You, I, that's what I was seeing, and and uh, there are a handful of them. Uh, right now, we have an executive council running the company that's all outsiders. Uh oh. Just think of the parallels here, people. As I read this, the current CEO is a General Electric guy, as is the CFO, whom he brought in. Uh oh. And we have a complete new HR leader. Um, well, we didn't have any uh, HR issues until we had an HR person at CrossFit. Zero. <laughs> Check this out. We didn't have an HR person. And we were told that if you have an HR issue, not having an HR person shows you don't care about HR and you'll be just like de facto guilty of being some kind of HR pervert, right? <laughs> so I'm like, oh, fuck, really? So this is Bruce that told me. So we hire one and we stick her in an office with, with two accountants, uh, both older than I am, all right? super conservative and somehow my hr gal discovers a feud between these two that ends up with these two accountants in prescott in their 60s coming to work armed i remember that They're both thinking that each is gonna is probably gonna kill the other and the one gal's husband's a cop and he's sending her to work armed because the other guy's a nut and he's coming to work armed because she's coming to work armed. And these people were friends before the HR guy was put in the office. I swear to God. Yeah, Holy that shit. is 10 years story. later. It's a true I, fucking story. Yeah. I mean, like I said, Dave, I would have expected this out of training or you know what I mean? Like where the kids were, not the not the staid conservative ultra Republican accountants. My HR gal, I don't I can't blame her, but weird enough. But you roll the ball, roll the clock forward eight years, and we have 23 people in HR. Hey, didn't the... Um, HR is a fucking business cancer. <laughs> and, and, and just so you know, people, when companies say they're getting rid of DEI, they're not getting rid of DEI. HR and people's department and all of that, that's where all those people go and hide. They burrow there. That's where they all are. All the HR people are DEI people. The, They're no HR better than gal, she said, uh, I said, you know, I get the feeling that Dave doesn't like me. And I go, I understand that. I go, that's probably because he doesn't like you. Yeah. And she was, why wouldn't he like she why does he not like me? And I go, well, that's the same reason I inclined to not like you. And that when <laughs> the teacher says, Who wants to be the hallway monitor? And the little girl in the back hand goes up, I do, I do, I do, I want to be the hallway monitor. You'll fucking hate her. <laughs> right, right. And that's what the HR gals like. And so what you need to do is you need to fashion yourself as the benefits lady and bring benefit to the employees. And she goes, well, how would I do that? And I go, I don't know. Like what, what companies have the very best benefits? She goes, oh, my gosh, you talking about being an employment brand. And I said, I love that. Let's do that. She's all right. How should we do it? I go, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> we just, we just went through this. We just, this is how we got to where we're at right here. And just in the space of like what I'm telling you. And so what did she do? She went to these employment brands and they were ultra kind. And this includes steam and, uh, or is it valve, whatever the, the, the gaming platform people that we had a list of companies that were employment brands and we went to them and their HR people were more than happy to open the books and show us what they did. And it turned out they're all doing the same fucking thing, using the same people, same kind. It was, it was great. And it was, it was, it was a solid way to, to take care of your employees. And we did exactly that. We imitated them and went with the same, the same outfits, the same plans, the same deals. And it was the very best you could do for your people. Um, you know, uh, places like Google, and Meta are pushing – Facebook and Instagram are pushing the whole DEI thing and DEI hires, which is code for hire people based on their skin color, their sex, and uh, whose genitalia that they, they prefer. And what was fascinating is, is those companies pay 40% over uh, a market value or the going rate for what, uh, uh, what they would get paid at, others com at other companies. So they get the top 20% of people. Well, the rest of the world – they be using that same methodology to choose your employees. They get the bottom 10%, meaning they get the worst people. I mean, you can only imagine how shitty our Supreme Court justice is because they chose her because she of her skin color and her sex. They, they were doing that at Hughes with, with affirmative action. So there's a, a 
black blind engineering student from Stanford, they got him. And it, and it may be that they don't even have anything for him to do, but check that off, we'll gobble him up. And it was, it was frequently unfortunate in that there would have been greater opportunities with another firm to do something more than just have been the check the box. That, look, we got a blind black guy that's worth mega points. <laughs> He's double points on the scale. Oh, he was a hot, he was a hot commodity. <laughs> and what he, what would have been better for him would have been to been a, a, a very successful engineer. Once you're hired because you're blind and black, it's going to be harder to sh demonstrate your engineering prowess. You understand that? <laughs> yep. Yes. Yep. That's <laughs> Hey, Greg, didn't, didn't you get to a point where they go, do you know this guy's a good engineer? No, shut up. Yeah, he is. I swear to God. The blind <laughs> black guy. Yes. <laughs> didn't our HR lady also know um, everything about the employees too. Like I, I told a story the other day where she, she knew everything about how I ran the company. And I asked her if she would just talk to the press and speak candidly about the kind of shop we run. She was like, they'll crucify me. I'll never be able to get another job. And so when we, when we really needed her, she couldn't, she couldn't, she couldn't uh, speak up. Um, um, didn't she tell, I, I remember her telling me one time that our health cost, our largest health cost was employees who were on psychiatric meds and she knew who they were. And I, I remember, and I was sharing that story the other day and I was like, holy shit, that means all the HR people in the world must also have that information, right? They know who's what you using. Could see, what you could see was the payout per employee, but not anything specific. You couldn't see who the employees were? Yeah, you could, but not what they were, where the money was going. So you could get a distribution oh. of where all the money was going and go, oh, psych meds are huge. And man, these fuckers love chiropractic. You know, you could see these things, but you couldn't. And you could see you could rank all the employees in terms of their usage from the biggest user of the insurance to the doesn't use it, but not what they used it for. But you could see an aggregate what it was used for. That's my recollection. But if let's say 90 percent, by the way, I'm, I'm speaking second or third hand. I've never been close to any of it. That's not that's not right. what a CEO does if you're really doing something. But if 90 percent of the people who were um, were on some psychiatric meds and you looked at the list, you could quickly be like, OK, that girl if, with the blue hair and the septum ring, she's on Xanax. <laughs> that's that would be i think that's fair i might have made that assumption though anyways right right <laughs> you didn't need the dollar amount to know that one yeah. somehow 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 she knew somehow she knew i don't know if she knew the precise med but somehow she knew uh i knew our number one and number two uh health insurance users and um and it, it was uh it was no surprise to me and she didn't keep – the HR people are just people. Like, they don't keep that shit a secret. You're in that space. You know, anyone with HR aspirations, I've, I'm kind of like Castro. He's probably not going to like this, but I'm, I'm inclined to not like him. Uh, the head of our commercial planes unit in Seattle – this is going back to Boeing – Listen to this. The head of our commercial airplanes unit in Seattle, who was fired last week, was one of the last engineers in the executive council. Oh, shit. So now they don't have any engineers in there advising them. Oh, boy, we got the blind black dude. And what's in what? So <laughs> what, would, what would be the purpose of Boeing? It's if it's not to make money. Well, I would say to keep their planes in the fucking air first. That's right. To make safe, <laughs> comfortable travel. Yep. To get to point A to point B in one yeah, piece. Yeah, and not going in the ground at 800 miles an hour against the pilot's wishes is not one of the <laughs> things that adds to comfort. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't check hey, the box. Hey, the parallels even get crazier. You, uh, you Listen, you, you, you focus on the money and you'll lose sight of the business. You'll take yep. it right into the fucking trees. Yep. Yep. The headquarters in Arlington is empty at Boeing. Nobody lives there. It says it's an empty executive suite. The CEO lives in New Hampshire. The CFO lives in Connecticut. The head of HR lives in Orlando. We just instituted a policy that everyone has to come into work five days a week except the executive council, which can use the private jet to travel to meetings. And that is the story. It is a company that is under caretakers. It is not under owners. And it is not under people who love airplanes. 
Jesus. I wouldn't even say it's under caretakers. It sounds like it's just under a bunch of hey, people. Matt, how much sense does that make? Zero sense. No, I mean the, the just the explanation. Like, of course, the planes are falling from the sky. <laughs> oh, no right. one's even in the office. Right. They don't have no engineers in their executive. Everybody's spread out. It's crazy. These are the really talented assholes that only care about the safety and performance of the plane and don't give a shit about the stock price. And so this mm -hmm. guy triples, I'm going to say it again, triples the stock value over a period of which they reduce the engineering burden. And now the planes are falling from the fucking sky and the company can't be resuscitated. Yep. And they now deserve it. They deserve to go under your, and you, we, we owe it to, to, to decency to not fly on those fucking airplanes. My flight to Delta flight. Everyone needs to, <laughs> needs to learn. Yeah, I'm I'm a Delta guy now. I have to do a uh, fucking ad for them. There was a company I know that was making a uh, commercial, and um, the commercial uh, cost five hundred thousand dollars to make. And uh, one of the the big arguments was what color uh, the rainbow jump rope should be in the commercial. And after spending five hundred thousand dollars, the commercial still never saw the. Uh, light of day mm. status games rule every boardroom in the country the dei narrative is a very real thing and at boeing dei got tied up in the status game it is the thing you embrace if you want to get ahead it became a means to power dei is the drop you put in the bucket and the whole bucket changes it is anti-excellence because it is ill-defined but it becomes oh there we go because it's ill-defined right but it became part of the culture and was tied to compensation. Every HR email, inclusive makes us better. This kind of politicization of HR is a real problem in all companies. Mic cracked. It did? Mm -hmm. I want, what do you think that is? Have you ever heard that before? Mm -mm. Are you hearing it, Matt? He really breaks up? That, that time I did, yeah. It just was like a little sizzle. Yeah, Sevi, do you have, is, what kind of bandwidth do you got there? I, I think I have good bandwidth. I've never, I've, no one's ever said this before. May, may, Probably the roadcaster, man. That thing always is like. Do you hear when I pull up, Um, uh, when I pull this up? I, I used to never hear a crackle, but now every time I pull up an article. Yep. I just heard it again. Yeah. I heard, I hear a crackle. Yep. That was I it. Want, I wonder if it's the uh, stream, StreamYard software. Uh, let me log off and log back on real quick. Yeah. See what happens. You know, it's funny, Greg, how you were talking about the focus on the bottom of the line shifting and then the plane started to fall out of the sky. Yeah. The parallel there was and it, But it worked, Matt. It worked. It MBA yeah. worked. They tripled the fucking stock value. Think of the people that moved on and just rode, like, surf that wave onto their next company they destroyed. That's right. Hey, you know what the term is, too, which is just perfectly fitting for this, is the executives and the CEOs with what they call the golden parachutes. Yes. Yes. What, wait, what is that term? What's the golden parachutes? It's it's like when you come in and you do like what Greg said, you, you change a bunch of stuff, you pump it, you pump it up with different subbing this out and changing this, doing the, the DEI thing. The stock price goes up and right as the cut, the stock price goes up and they realize the company as a total is going to shit. They move on to their next company or their next venture with this huge, you know, package that they get that they signed on to, regardless of how well long term the company does. And they call it the golden parachute. They say oftentimes CEOs will get these golden parachutes. And I just thought it was ironic that we're talking about the Boeing. It's kind of like Gavin Newsom in his political career, you know? He fucked up San Francisco so bad they made him governor, which he's fucked up so bad he's a perfect candidate for president with those idiots. Yep. Did, yep. did you hear that um, uh, San Francisco is trying to pass a law that if you close down a store that sells food, you have to notify the city uh, six months prior to closing and you have to actively look for a replacement. <laughs> uh, the radicalization of HR doesn't hurt uh, tech business like it hurts manufacturing business. At Google, they're making a large profit margin and pursuing very progressive hiring policies because they are paying 30 to 40% more than the competition in salary. They're able to get the top 5% or whatever racial group they want. They can afford, in a sense, to pay the DEI tax and still find top people. But this can be catastrophic in lower margin legacy companies. You are playing musical chairs. And if you do the same thing that Google is doing, you're going to end up with the bottom 20% of the preferred population. 
I mean, you could see that by uh, the the Fannie Willis case. You can see that um, that whole uh, district attorney's office is filled with morons, and they're all DEI hires. They they got the bottom two percent. They don't even have mastery over the English language. It, to hire outside of merit is unethical, and what we're seeing here is the is the the other cost and that's in the practical so you they implement racist policies which is unethical and the planes are falling from the sky which is tragic um i noticed um and i real i realized part of it is is my bias it's kind of like looking at what hitler did for germany what do you mean well he's profoundly an, an a moral abomination and they ended up in like ruins we stopped right. bombing germany because there was nothing left to blow up <laughs> the only thing left to do was to go through the streets and shoot all the people you know i mean there's mm -hmm. we we ran out of targets The purpose of the company now, and this is reiterating what you said, is broad stakeholder value, including DEI and ESG. This was the this was then embraced as a means to power, which further separated the workforce from the company and is ripping our society apart. Yeah, it's funny. You can see it in these little micro. Uh, you can see it in the, what's happening in society in, in almost every company. You get rid of merit. The, when, when I watch the UFC now, it's the only TV I watch. Every single commercial has people in it that I, I don't I don't recognize that I hadn't seen before. It's it's like uh, every commercial now has to have a black person in it. What I just saw a movie the other day, and you, you know, to win the Academy Award, you have to now to be even nominated for an Academy Award, you have to have certain criteria, DEI criteria. So you have to have a certain amount of black people, certain amount of disabled people. And the other day, like I was noticing, like all of a sudden there was someone in a wheelchair in a shot and there was a dwarf over here. And I was like, oh, what movie was that? I just saw um, the uh, podcast. Well, yeah, this show's <laughs> like that. But we're not trying to do that. No, I know. It was just a joke with the examples you use there. Yeah. <clears throat> we have dwarves and disabled people and uh, lesbians. We have the whole gambit here, but we choose them based. They don't have to worry about they were only choose for their merit. That's right. It was a movie that John Cena was in. What's that movie on Netflix John Cena's in? Do uh, it was actually a funny movie. I was actually surprised. It's either on Netflix or Amazon. John Cena, the dude who apologized in Mandarin because he upset his CCP overlords. Oh, did it really? Yeah, don't you remember when he said something about Taiwan or whatever? And a few, like a less than a month later, he's literally on Twitter speaking Mandarin, apologizing for his oversights in the in the language he used. I mean, I you can't that. tell me that you're me. just a CCP puppet at that point. It's like him and LeBron James and all the and and even the Rock. I would say, you know, once you try to hit reach that multi billion dollar market over there in China, they'll start bending over backwards for for those communists. I. He, I would. I support a, a one China. I think that Taiwan ought to take the mainland. <laughs> that too. Boeing is the most visible example because every problem, like say a bolt that fails off, gets amplified. But this is happening everywhere around us, and it's going to have a huge effect. DEI and ESG became a way to stop take, talking honestly to employees. That's right. In fact, I go back to the Clue Train Manifesto. Um, that corporate speak is there loud and cleared in the in the DEI. There's such a lack of logic or morality to that thing that it that the best of DEI writing reads like AI writing. And the, and the key to spotting AI is that is that the each sentence makes sense, but the prose is taking you nowhere. There's no path, there's no structure, there's no argument, there's no conclusion. It's just nostrum. The, the best of AI looks 
like your run of the mill New York Times piece. Right. Mm hmm. Have you noticed this trend in journalism to like, you can't get to the fucking point? I'm a thousand <laughs> words in and I don't see how this relates to the headline yet. Mm -hmm. Background, 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 Jesus, and aside, you know, it's it's nuts. There, I don't think there's people in the, I don't think there's editors anywhere telling you, listen, just get to the fucking point here. <laughs> I still know what words you need. I don't know what you're talking about until I get down to here. Why don't we pull all this shit about how you feel about it out? And 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 how about this this summary judgment in the middle of the goddamn thing when I still don't know what the topic is? Let's take it out too. <laughs> I understand the conclusion you've come to, but I don't know about what. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, if if you go, if you get uh, if you go to YouTube and you type in Diddy. And you get in that algorithm. Like I got in that algorithm. I watched 20 Diddy videos. It became yeah, clear to me. All just, you jumbled up. Say it again. Uh, uh, when, when I went to, uh, oh, if you go to YouTube and you type in Diddy and you get that in your algorithm like I did. And I watched like 20 Diddy videos that were from five minutes to 26 minutes long, right? Over a three-day period. So everything they're offering me is on Diddy. What I realized, and I'm not sure exactly how it works, but I've seen it with making clips. You can just you can t have AI write you something now and says, "Hey, can you write me something that lasts uh, uh, that's a thousand words or five thousand words about Diddy?" It'll write it, then you can put it into some other software, and it will start pulling clips from the internet and cover it um, with what the AI wrote. And so there's all of these clips talking about Diddy and they offer nothing. None of them offer anything new and they're just different iterations of the same speculation. It's wild. They have that. So Greg, I can take a clip from this show. I can take this show and I can put it into some cheap AI software. It'll break it into 50 clips. And then there's a little toggle button and I can toggle the button that says insert pictures. And so if you said, yeah, the, the country's going down in flames, it'll have some flames cross the screen as you say that. And, 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 and so basically what I'm tying this to is not only is the New York Times like that, but YouTube is now filling up with that. It's, it's absolutely it, – it's such it's, – there's just – it's so easy to make propaganda now. It's so easy to make propaganda now. Yeah, I, I think it always has been. Good point. These, the, there's a <clears> – <throat> There is a virus-like or prion-like nature to the to liberalism that there, it's a skill. It's not a logic. It, it, there's it's not a logical position, but there is a skill to turning your your every utterance into some supporting liberal bullshit. It's a it's like being in character. And it's, a, it's an easy thing to imitate. It's an easy thing to mimic. Um, before I became well-known, I had this fantasy of going up to Santa Cruz, UC Santa Cruz, growing my hair long and starting riots and then writing liberal like me. You know, the black like me, Howard Griffin book. So yeah, it would, yeah. It would, be, it would be so easy to get in that mix and make yourself famous spewing absolute horse shit. <laughs> You know that guy died, right? Yeah. From from cancer. Yeah, I do. From making himself black. I don't think you'd die though, pretending to be to be a liberal. Alan Sokol basically did that with the uh, with his spoof. The bullshit science crowd is also the left, by the way, in case anyone's missed that. <laughs> We need to tear off the veil of all this coded language that's being used everywhere. Our elites, this is, I'm still reading from the article. Um, uh, uh, our uh, elites need to recover some sense of service to people. They think they have it already because they are reciting these shibiths. I don't know what that means. Uh, a custom or principle of beliefs distinguishing a particular class or group of people. Okay. Am I pronouncing that word right? Shibbeth? Because they're reciting these shibbeths of moral virtue. I'm serving, quote, I'm serving because I'm repeating what everyone else is saying about DEI, close quote. It's a form of chief self-love that is being embraced by leaders. If you pay the tax to DEI gods or the ESG gods and use coded language with your workforce, that's corporate talk. It absolves you of the hard work of really leading. Yeah, and 
I mean, yeah, there's obviously a, a huge a, vacuum of leadership. Yeah. It's entirely an affectation. I was um, I, uh, something that um, you did so well. Um, th this CrossFit cult or this CrossFit community is like raising a shitload of kids, and kids need leadership, and kids need boundaries, and and when within those boundaries, they need to be like free within those boundaries. And in the, in the boundaries, there are no boundaries with uh, DEI. It's just chaos. There's no real fucking leadership. And so when you were there, you told us, hey, that you kept telling us, you kept messaging the community, this is CrossFit. This is CrossFit. Forging Elite Fitness, cure for the world's most vexing problem. Work capacity, broad, about, uh, uh, work capacity, broad time, and modal domains. You kept giving us, hey, guys, these are the boundaries. These are the boundaries. This is what we are. Hey, guys, it, nutrition's at the base of the pyramid. Hey, guys, it, hey, and there was just constant, constant, boundaries letting people know and then we existed as a as a community in harmony working together under that leadership those strict rules and if you don't have those strict definitions it's fucking chaos and that's what i, I really um since the the last show when we were talking about what you said about i'm um, giving the money to you or giving it to private equity that's I realized, oh shit, that was Greg. Greg was not only the CEO, but he was the chief messaging officer. And we, and there is, there isn't that now. There's a vacuum in the uh, talking space to the um, to CrossFitters to messaging, and that's why we just have utter chaos right now. It at the at the moment that the deal closed, the purpose of the company shifted from from protecting affiliates at all cost because they were delivering this revolution in in health and fitness to we got to make some money and mm -hmm. i remember when i met with one of the senior vps at family fitness he was talking to his ceo on the phone and I was out in the hallway and he says, this guy is a complete fucking trip. It's like all he cares about is fitness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's, no, seriously, dude. That's like, that's it. He's like, it's that's this whole thing. It's all, it's, all, he's, it's all he thinks about. And so the CEO wanted to meet me. Never met a guy like that. Is that mm. the guy we met in Malibu and his son? No, that was uh, oh. that was L.A. Fitness. Oh, It's amazing. Dude, that, it was easy to rip through that industry and just be the dominant force. Because <laughs> you just talked about fitness. <laughs> doing it correctly, doing it efficiently, doing it effectively, and making it widely available to anybody pack, who's willing pack to try. Idiots in academia had a definition for fitness, and I could tell exactly what they did. I could tell exactly what they did. They passed the fucking hat around and let everyone add some elements. But it had 35 or 40 pieces in this big old fucking run-on sentence way too many commas and terms and of the elements there were only two that were actually quantifiable and and we suspected Lon Kilgore turned me on to this is from the ACSM and the suspicion was that they didn't mean power and energy in the sense that I did because it was in there with vitality well-being <laughs> all the things that all this psychosocial bullshit mm -hmm. it's like they and accidentally got it right with those words yeah yeah like oh look at this power i wonder what they mean by that they never made it to that sentence i wonder what they mean by that well to the point where you were talking about earlier it's like if i reflect on it when we were just talking about the boeing and the parallels of crossfit here i'm thinking back and i'm like wow the messaging that i heard under your leadership greg was we have the cures for the world's most vexing problem the education and you pushing forward in that and then how to protect the uh, affiliates from um, regulation of government to step in between them and the people that they were serving. And then now when I reflect back on what we've heard over the last couple of years, it's how it, more people are going to show up inside of my affiliate. And the ironic part about that is when we focus on education, the professionalization of the trainer and uh, in excellence as our North Star, ironically enough, more people showed up inside my affiliate. Then when we focused on bringing people into my affiliate, the whole entire community or that framework that Savan was talking about just kind of crumbled away. If you make for any, any kind of service, if you make a, a family tree of your clientele, 
and everyone should do this. And it's 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 kind of easy to do. You know, where did where did Bob come from? Where did Sue come from? Where did Mary come from? I did that with my practice, and uh, I. It was interesting because Bruce Edwards was the key to, he was that big node where so many people came from. But interestingly, it was somewhat indirect. I mean, it was people that knew him from sailing and people that knew him, blah, blah, blah. Word kind of got out. But what you need to do is, is the, the input where you have the greatest control is the quality of the service. And, and when you excite that person, they become a marketer for you. And, and then you start asking around, you know, I asked Dr. Fenderson, the orthodontist in, uh, in uh, Prescott, who's got 15 chairs and, and 15 really cute girls basically doing all the shit. And he stands over there with his arms folded and looks in the, and you got a big view of Granite Mountain out these windows. It's the coolest looking practice of any kind of, hair salon, dentist office, whatever you, you know, really neat operation. And it's the same thing with him. It was say, it's, you know, friends of, of, uh, and, and family and kids of customers. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not advertising. It's not the billboard off the freeway. Mm -hmm. Do a job so good that people won't shut up about it. To, to pile well, on. You, so cool. We would get in. A, I'd get in an elevator with someone, and I'd be there with say me, Dave, Nicole, and Dale, and someone would ask, "CrossFit, what's that?" And we'd all go, "Ah, oh, geez, you know, I, I, you know, we, we <laughs> couldn't answer the question, and our customers couldn't shut the fuck up about it. <laughs> we were tongue tied, and the customers were ecstatic. Mm -hmm. You don't have to see. You don't have to do shit. Put. Put all your thought into the next person next hour to your eight o'clock client. Give her everything, everything, and stay on that path. And pretty soon she doesn't, she when she's getting her hair done, she wants to talk about her trainer. Mm hmm. And someone mentions, you look good. Oh, yeah. Now it's it. Now you open the floodgate. She's going to talk about her CrossFit class for the next hour. She's sitting in her chair getting her hair cut. And anybody really picked up on some some smoking hottie down south, Sevy. Dr. Will? Uh-huh. And uh, first date in, um, uh, she uh, said that she has a very close friend who has done work with CrossFit. And, and uh, so I, I called Will coincidentally while this conversation was going on. And he's, oh my God, we were just talking about you. And she was saying she has a friend that's an attorney and did some CrossFit work. <laughs> <laughs> I knew him. And I go, let's give it a try. And she goes, Justin Nahama. And I said, you tell my boy Justin I sent my love. So she texts him. And, he, and he, then now she's like, she can't believe it, right? Like, I know Justin better than you do. And I, I don't even know you. but Small world. <laughs> small world to pile on to what Susa was saying um andrew hiller was uh saying i think it's yesterday that crossfit needs to solely focus on what greg used to focus on and that is uh being the preeminent training methodology uh lifestyle methodology in the world and then everything else will fall into place like hey don't worry about putting people in the affiliates don't worry about giving business advice don't worry just keep pushing the supporting the fact that it is the ultimate training methodology, lifestyle methodology and everything like just hold that mantle. That's the only Greg already told us. That's the only mantle we need to hold. And if we hold that, all the good things will come from it. Just keep focusing excellence there. And when he said that, I was like, wow, that that's basically what we did in, in all, in all areas, everything we were doing, whether it would be talking about medicine or movement or diet, it was always like, hey, that's, we focused on being the preeminent, source for that information i remember one time i thought you were crazy when you said this and it's funny how right you were you wanted the crossfit journal to um replace the cdc as the as the as the home of the one-stop shop for all things um health related and i thought fuck, that's nuts but now you flash for it actually after we went through COVID, it was i mean not whether we ever made it to the top they fell from the top right and uh I, and i finally saw what you saw like oh shit! if you want to figure out 
God, this is going to get, I hope this doesn't get the video pulled. But if you want to figure out how to uh, stay away from COVID and stay healthy and live as long as you can, uh, do not go to the CDC website. Stick to uh, the CrossFit Journal. It's, 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 it's that simple. The, 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 you know, I always to say that I don't know what the charter of the ACSM or the NSCA or the CDC is, but I would presume it to be something about providing reliable information about health and lifestyle choices, salient lifestyle choices and their implications, you'd hope. And then when you see that, that whether that was the charter or not, that nothing like that is being done, um, that in fact, what the practice is somewhat antithetical to, to being honest, which is what it's dishonest. And, and it's a lot of supported bullshit science and cover up of, of its failures. Um, why am I going here? Uh, basically, they have oh, a charter oh, and it's, it's not. Abandoned mantle. The mantle's abandoned. Someone needs to take it. And, yeah. and it starts by, hey, let's do this. Let's just tell people the truth. And that's where we got that tagline. Um, let's start with the truth. Mm -hmm. And see what happens. Just do that. How about not lying for a while? There was the message. There was the more good messaging. Let's start with the truth. I'm looking. I went to the ACSM website and I'm looking if they if I can find their uh, charter. You know, it's funny too. Going back to what we were talking about of like the focus on what HQ focuses on or what even affiliates uh, owners should focus on. It's also written in the methodology. Greg already talked about it. He said you you look at your inputs, you decide on your inputs, and you measure your outputs. And if it's not lining up with what you had hoped it, you just go back and change those inputs, do it for a little bit, then measure the outputs. And you don't even really need to talk about exactly what the plan is or anything. But if you just use that formula, you could continue to move until you're on target with what you're trying to accomplish. So if you're an affiliate owner and you're focusing on your ad buying through Facebook and your next like great video that's coming out and your outputs are showing less and less people are coming through the door, then maybe change your inputs to focusing on the woman at the eight o'clock class, give them everything you possibly can, educate them, help them improve their life when they're in front of you for your hour and watch what happens with those outputs. She starts bringing in another friend and another friend. The kid that's developing my project, my project manager on the build next door, and this is independent of the, of the, uh, construction contractor, independent of the architect, independent of interior design crew, with a family has a, a development guy that's Elliot, who's managing the project. And uh, when this kid graduated from college, he uh, flipped a couple hundred houses his first year in real estate. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's now he now he builds multi-million dollar houses and lives in them a few years and then sells them and builds another bigger one and he's just you know he's got it going on but i recognize in everything he does i recognize the approach and if i were to tell you i go hey this guy's really a trip all he thinks about is real estate and building and homes and property values and you know <laughs> it's like he's he's a committed professional mm-hmm Following this World War picked up a dirt lot where a super church had gotten so big it had to move with its huge congregation, right? TV quality church, popular. And he bought the parking lot from them and then uh, made a plan for 38 uh, single family uh, units on the thing and pushed it through uh, city council in uh, Mesa and got it approved on the basis of an animation of the final project and I, he got me involved with it but before breaking ground um well first off we, we picked up the dirt got approved for the project and then on the basis of the animation one from the city uh best new design in mesa for the year <laughs> and it's already we can sell the dirt now before even putting a shovel in it yeah and and we've made money already. <laughs> yep. Like this is God. This is easy. And but I, you know, I I would have done it myself, except I don't know anything of what Elliot knows, and I don't care as much as he does, and I'm not as smart as. But his his obsession with this makes it a sure thing. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna we're gonna build these 38 units and keep them, and rent them out. Amazing. And then I'll do it again, and I'll <laughs> do it again. 
you know? <laughs> yep. Wow. How do you get in on that? What's the lowest uh, barrier to entry for price? I'll throw my hat. The values, the, you know, the 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 quality and the commitment, and you know, a floor buckles and he's there to have it fixed. And I, I'm, I got this with my with, with my builder. It's really neat to deal with professionals. Mm -hmm. And everything that's going on at Boeing looks like none of that. <laughs> They fired all None those people. That. They fired those people and outsourced it. Imagine Paul, outsourcing a, a critical piece of airplane that doesn't to a company that doesn't have an engineering department <laughs> and they know it, so they punt. Without you knowing, they've outsourced it to someone else. Fuck, that's crazy. <laughs> How about the, the missing defective parts, Sevi? There's a whole rack of defective parts that three or four hundred study and yep. they disappeared and it turned out they got installed oh, on one of the shit. 737 maxes it, pilot was having trouble with the tail so they get in there and there was a, a aluminum assembly ladder left in the tail section and it got tangled up with the screw that moves the tail and a they left a ladder. ladder holy shit yeah a ladder yeah it's that blind dude working there that's the only way you could do that <laughs> Yeah, they had uh, three or four. The report says they had three or four hundred parts that were defective parts. They had them in a pile. They were never um, cataloged, and then the parts went missing. And they're like, they realized that they had reinstalled them into the planes. The defective parts. Where are the parts? There they are. <laughs> On uh, that plane that just took off. In in 1946, uh, Coca Cola President Robert Woodruff brokered an agreement with Emory University to sell 15 <coughs> acres of land. To become the CDC campus for ten dollars. So basically, Coca Cola is is the uh, you could say is the founder of the Center of Disease Control. They gave they gave the land to the U.S. government so they would build it right next to the fucking Coca Cola uh, factory. I, I want I want to say this too to you guys. Look, um, we were involved with a we were involved with a FOIA on that and uh, Rona Applebaum and all that shit. They, the infection, the Coca Cola infection at CDC rises to the top. They got that. They got that poison running in their veins. Crazy. We will do everything in the world around chronic disease except discuss openly and honestly its causes. <laughs> Can't touch everything that. but. Everything but that. I bet you you can find someone on the CDC board that was that also uh, works at Coca Cola too. The hour is a really well paid consultant. I bet you that wouldn't Something be like hard. That. I bet you that wouldn't be hard to find. Something you guys should know too. Let me let me just put this in context. This is a little off subject here, but in the in the, um, in the 20th century, which is basically 1901 to 1999, 500,000 people died of polio in the United States. And the biggest year, the most amount of people that ever died was in uh, 1952, where 3,000 people died of polio. To put that in context, 100,000 people between the age of 19 and 45 will die this year from fentanyl overdose. So in the next five years, people between the ages of 19 and 45 will die from uh, more people will die from fentanyl overdose than died in 100 years from polio. Because <laughs> context is so important. Right. Great question, Heidi. Is Coca-Cola going to buy Boeing? Uh, needs like, be, someone needs to make an app that helps you book flights uh, based on plane type. Mm, wow. Oh, wow. shit. Wow. Yep. I would have changed my flights immediately if I had that. I doubt, yeah, wow. I download that tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. If, uh, just information on when was this Boeing built? Okay. They still had the real engineers there. All right. Okay. That's going to check out. And you get notified if there's been a plane swap. <laughs> <laughs> Ding, yours, yours have been switched out. Nope, I'll take the yeah. next slide out, please. This is a great question. Greg has some experience with this, I think, uh, recently. Uh, I know that Greg has given talks at universities, UVA for sure. What what his faith in the university system, uh, is it better? 
was his faith in his university system better back then or has it faded with time? Uh, what was the goal of those? Yeah, speak? thanks for the question, Jason. It looks like this. Um, you know, I remember there was a moment where I was honestly musing with Russ Green. I said, it's crazy. I mean, we find corruption uh, only where we've looked. You know, I mean, it's everywhere. And, and <laughs> it takes a while to realize that everything's bullshit. It comes painfully one thing at a time. I've really enjoyed the awakening of RFK Jr., you know, that's what we're witnessing, by the way, an honest politician getting smarter at 69, 70 years old. He's getting smarter every day and you mm -hmm. actually get to see it unfold, kind of like the South Park kids growing up, you know, um, Matt and Trey. Oh, the, the, uh, it, it's it's a cool thing and it gives you it gives you hope. And what am I talking about? We, we saw it happen to Tucker Carlson. Also, we saw it happen to we saw it happen to Joe Rogan. I mean, there's a bunch of people who are in the um, limelight who we saw who we've seen wake up. Uh, uh, not Richard. Who's the comedian guy? Um, we saw it happen to him. Uh, Bron Brannigan, Bran, Braun. I always get him mixed up with Richard Branson. But uh, yeah, it. Greg, you've spoken probably at a dozen universities, at least, right? I mean, are you spoken at Harvard a half dozen times? Yeah, I've, I've gotten yeah more, I oh, more to answer the question again. So, the the quality of the problem at the university? No, I have no faith in them, none at all, none at all. It's a it's a disaster. It's a time to reset. Mm -hmm. Even when you went to what, what was the college you went to in Michigan recently? Even there, there were some quackadoodles. Hillsdale, right? Hillsdale, yeah. Uh, Braylon, a uh, tender fitness competitor. Greg, what's the number one sign of an athlete uh, needing rest? Well, like I don't want to do. I don't want to do tired is needing rest right yawning you know maybe so i'm going to separate <laughs> being Falling tired straight. from a need for rest and the need for rest i'm hearing we're dancing around the subject of overtraining and there's a preclinical manifestation of overtraining that's that's simply just mood state and so when i would come in in the morning and hey everybody and no one looks at me and you know, you just kind of then do a little survey. What have the last few episodes been like? And if it was super rigorous, it might be time to throttle back. And you can see in yourself when your enthusiasm for the workout is gone. Um, the, the next thing you're going to see is retrograde performance. And now I've got now I've got a classical marker, a metric. I can quantify the overtraining by the retrograde performance. Mm. And and so you should be working out hard enough that you're sore, you feel it, you're tired, but you can't wait to get back in when it's time to go back in. So it might be like if you go on Friday, fuck, that was hard. I fucked up. I went home and crashed. But Sunday, yeah, I'm good to go again. And that's fine. It's fine. If Sunday you're like, oh, fuck, workout, really? God, that came fast. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> now you Tuesday you hit it again and you know I've seen I've seen uh, uh, UFC Hall of Famer crying because we're gonna go easy today like tear up thank you big hug you know? <laughs> God. God. I needed this yeah you got you t and you can see it in a group you can feel it in the 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 aura of a, of your twenty people that morning. You'll know if you care about them. You'll feel it in the energy. Uh, Jody, you, you have to learn to do that for yourself. Jody Lynn, uh, I have a friend making six figures uh, who just left Prattney and Whitney because of this unethical ridiculousness, making planes dangerous. She couldn't handle it. Oh, shit. Well, my my King Air has two Pratt and Whitney engines on it. So thanks for the heads up. <laughs> uh, I would short every one of the ESG DEI companies, every fucking one of them. Short them. Mm, mm, they've lost they're going their down. Mm -hmm. they've taken it. The, they've taken the NBA poison pill. They're going to have a good Q one, two, three. Drive the stock up, and then their planes will fall from the sky. So will that stock price? 
I would expect, you know, the equivalent of Hershey would be to start putting rat shit in the chocolate, right? <laughs> That's right. Yep. <laughs> it's already there. Uh, CrossFit, uh, t t uh, Tyler, CrossFit has a formula that made it the fastest growing chain ever, and they decided to take another route. Are they insane or retarded in intellect? Because that seems to be the only explanation. Yeah, why not just use the formula that uh, um, that was used forever? Yeah. Tyler, if, you, if you're looking for an argument, you need another subject. <laughs> <laughs> what else you got, kid? Um, if the uh, company wasn't purchased to dismantle, I see no evidence of that. Say, I've been oh, looking. Oh, oh. I've been looking. Oh. I would Why like, not just, I, you know, and I and I invite anyone to bring me something that would like. Oh no, fuck! They're really trying to, they, you know. One of their key people said they're conducting a master class in how to destroy a healthy business. <laughs> One of their key people. Uh, uh, I told a member at my box today about what Greg is doing with Broken Science. Her response. Uh, um, we should, she's a PA. I don't know what that means. Oh, a physician assistant. We should take anything he says with a grain of salt. <laughs> yeah. yeah, please. Everyone should I, take everything everyone says with a grain of salt. That was her rebuttal to that. She goes, yeah. yep, that's exactly what his point was, actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you. Wow, she must have gone to the Broken Science Seminar. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah, she's she goes, oh, well, she tried to do it as a warning, and, and the person goes back, yeah, actually, that's what he's teaching us. Discernment. Yeah, that's it. That's that's uh, it feels like a that feels like a setup. <laughs> uh, Jane, Jane, uh, Janelle Winston, I really don't want to fly anymore. Thanks, guys. Yeah, you know that that video I showed you um, is just from two days ago with the engine cover coming off the plane. And uh, that pretty much did it for me, too. I was already like, I'm not flying anywhere, but that really did it. Uh... I tell um, you what, my, my pilot, but... Mike, the guy who runs CrossFit Air, we got two planes and he takes care of them. And there's maintenance schedules for everything. And there's a there's a, a, a range of dates and times. And we make hard stops on the on the front end of all those dates. So if you need to replace something every you know six hundred to a thousand hours, we don't fly past six hundred with that unaddressed. It's over. And he does the same thing for his if he drinks or not, number of landings after dark in that particular aircraft, his certifications. Still walks around the plane and wiggles things, kicks the tires, you know, checks mm -hmm. for moisture in the fuel every fucking time. I remember my first pilot. Um, he wasn't a professional safety pilot. He was he he, he knew how to fly a plane, and he was managing the uh, the Reebok relationship. But uh, he was he'd read books and shit, and do all kinds of stuff up and and. Mike's never like that. He's all, he's always paying attention. But uh, I feel safer in my own plane than I do uh, flying commercially. That was the pilot who uh, we couldn't get the door closed on the plane, and we flew uh, from San Diego to Santa Cruz with the door open. No, no, that was the pilot before then. When when my when my <laughs> pretend pilot. Um, got replaced <laughs> with the real pilot. The pretend pilot sabotaged the hinges on the doors so they wouldn't seal. Jeez. Just took a screwdriver to the set mechanism for the doors. And so, up at altitude, Sevy and I were sitting in the plane. How warm was it, Sevy? Um, my foot was so numb, I thought I was gonna die from the cold air blowing right directly on my foot. And I had to pee so bad. That was, that was the only time I think, I don't know what the, the medical condition is, but I felt poisoned when we landed. I held my pee so long. I felt like I had been poisoned. Holy shit. Reverse pismosis. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine uh, that. Imagine the pilot sabotaging the airplane. 
I can't imagine it. It's it was exactly in character for that young man. Jeez. The stories so, I could I was thinking about that the other day. That so it's some t- day that might just be fun to do to sit and and tell and all the stories. Through, go through all those stories. <laughs> A 2017 female pilot freak out. Let me see if I if that gets me. Uh oh, listen to pilots epic. Let me see. Oh wow, wow. This is going to be interesting. Let's see if I can uh, pull this up. Is is this it? Uh, let's see. Okay, if you can still take it off the airplane. This is your captain speaking, but never like this. I'll stop, and I will fly the airplane. Don't worry, I'm going to let my co-pilot fly it. He's a man. Okay? It's a total meltdown. What the hell? Address the passengers over the intercom. She said, let's take a vote. How many of you would like to take off? You mentioned that um, a gentleman stood up. Damn. She was ahead of her time for DEI. <laughs> a pioneer, if you will. When was that? Enough. You're scaring me. Another passenger, Randy Reese, got Wait. up. Are these people getting off the plane? Yeah, this guy's yeah. pissed. He said he He's got up and said, that. hey, you're scaring me. I'm off. Huh. I'm shaking right now. The captain demonstrated that she was not mentally in a safe space. <laughs> she says, sorry, I'm going through a divorce. Um, uh-oh. Hey. <laughs> oh, man. How oh, is it How geez. is it like, hey, something's wrong with you, and the excuse is, yes, something is wrong with me. The, pilot- the person um, they should interview is her husband. <laughs> <laughs> Why, is she even dr- fly the plane. Why is she even dressed like that if she's the captain of the plane? To f- affirmative action hire. <laughs> oh, so she said to a mixed race couple, "Did I offend you?" Did I offend you? Okay, so Delta got all the female pilots that knew how to fly. <laughs> oh no! Well, thank you for that. I mean, I, I I guess at the end of the day, we just have to remember that everyone doing everything is just a person. Yep. And we know half the people are fucking crazy. Uh, speaking of flying, are you coming out here today? No, it's tomorrow now. Oh shit! I know. We have uh, our, we have our three D ultrasound today at eleven, and I was thinking of jumping in after that. But the King Air is ready tomorrow. Oh, and that's nice. That's nice. So I'm I'm gonna come in the morning. I'm gonna come. Come early. Maybe. Uh, what is tomorrow? Friday? Thursday. Thursday? Uh, tomorrow's Thursday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's even better. And I don't have to report to duty till Saturday. We could do, uh, will you be here at, at 11 for opening hours? Yeah, I'd love to. In yeah, fact, I, I was thinking of just hitting Mike up and seeing how, how early we could blow Dodge here. When can can you take off? When you have your own plane, can you take off anytime you want, twenty four hours a day, or do the um, airports? In the commercial airports, they they have you know operating hours. It, it, like in Watsonville, though, we could do, leave anytime. Like you could land there at three a.m. Scottsdale, I'm assuming that the FBO has hours of operation, but I don't know. There must be people coming in from around the world all times at night. Right. So I would think that's probably twenty four seven. But I know I know Sky Harbor isn't. That's the Phoenix airport? Yeah. There's yeah, noise I, abatement regulation for the big airports. I can remember landing in airports at times when you get off the plane and the airport's closed. And so you can't even walk around Dude, the airport. You, you, fly, you fly privately into Toronto and land after 10 p.m., and the tower will tell you they're sorry, but customs is closed and gone home for the day. And you just get off the bird and you go. On the way out, U.S. Customs is, I don't see your entry stamp. And before I can <laughs> explain, he goes, oh, you arrived after 10? I go, yeah. And the guy shakes his head and closes his eyes. And I'm <laughs> like, wow, it's that complicated. Go charter, get there at 1030. You're fine, man. Doesn't you're matter good. what's 
the bag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you show up at 9 30 and they're gonna keep you there till 10, I guess, until they have to go home. Until it's yeah, closing time. Holy shit. My dad flew Medivac in a King Air for 15 years. In the States, uh, Janelle? Or outside That's the country? Cool. Yeah, that is cool. The military version of the King Air and the, and the medical version, there's a spy version. They're all cool. There's the drug courier version too, right? Wasn't it the preferred plane for um, uh, drugs back and forth from South America to the U.S.? I'm sorry? It, there's the drug, uh, like a, a a version that was preferred by the cartel too, right? Wasn't the King Air the preferred plane oh, by I the cartel? Know. I don't know, but it's got, uh, you know, short takeoff and landing. And it's uh, one of the bigger things you can put down on gravel and shit. You chip up the propellers and it's Mike doesn't ever want to do it. But it's kind of like it's kind of like beaching a jet ski. I looked up, is it cool to beach a jet ski? And, they, and my yeah. favorite was. Definitely, but someone else's. <laughs> <laughs> Not your own. That's a rental. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, beachy means you just drive it right up onto the sand. Yeah, and, like, and in sand, potentially no harm, but you can suck shit up. I mean, it just shouldn't be done. It's not It's not good practice. Hey, I can show you on the river and the lake sunken jet skis. Really? Yeah. What causes yeah, them to go pierce, down? You pierce the hide on the bottom and it goes down like a rock. Wow. If if uh land if landing I didn't even think about that landing on a dirt strip would fuck up the propellers. Mm -hmm. Everything it kicks up. Well, your propellers hey, are made that, of carbon. When Biden went to Capitola to pretend to care about the storm damage, they <laughs> they uh he flew it into uh San Jose and then took Marine One to Watsonville and the helicopters landed there at the airport and when they took off there were rocks on the runway you know this big that got blown from the helicopters taking off they kind of fucked up our our runway do you remember that we, we were coming uh -huh. back and we had to delay a land till they got they got clueless joe out and uh, cleaned the runway i remember i i was in um sunnyvale and i saw um I saw Air Force One land and it was massive. And then I did see through the three helicopters then, you know, 30 minutes later take off and start heading towards Watsonville. I remember that three big, massive helicopters. Why do they do that? So you don't know which one he's in? Well, they, they wanted to get him to Capitola. And but why three helicopters? Oh, I so you don't know which one to shoot maybe. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. I watched a helicopter land. It's a, uh, Pierce College in the San Fernando Valley at Marine One land and the door opens up and then I saw Reagan walking with a team underneath the bleachers. He arrived by car, but they still sent the bird to look like he was gonna. Oh, wow. So he wasn't even in the fucking thing and everyone was looking at the wrong place and he walked right by us. Mm. Like, oh, fuck, look, that's him, you know? <laughs> Imagine they go, hey, he's not going in it. We think that someone's going to try and shoot it down. So you guys go. And we'll take him with us. <laughs> you guys go in the helicopter. We're going to just yeah. go out the back door. Yeah, we're worried about a terrorist. There's a report of someone with a stinger. <laughs> uh, CrossFat has a similar story. I was at a World Series game. They had five limos, uh, sp spoke to Secret Service. The current president was actually in a suburban. I guess that all makes sense. Mm-hmm. Multiple diversions. All right. So you'll be here uh, tomorrow, and then and then how, how many days are you staying? I'm gonna be there. I'll, I'm gonna get in early, so we'll be there. We'll have Thursday and Friday, and again, I don't have to report to duty till Saturday. Okay. Gonna be down in Malibu. Nice. And then from there to Bora Bora or Tora Tora? What's that place Bora called? Bora Bora. Four Seasons. Have you seen it yet? Have you looked at it on the on the, the pictures? No, but I have. I have a, you know. It, oh, shit. It is that. I thought maybe it might be that. Mm -hmm. Are you in one of those rooms that's out on the water? I'm sure. Oh, it's that one that like. 
goes all the way out there and it has the little uh, rooms right on right off. Hey, the, the more the farther away, the nicer the Four Seasons. And the, I've only been to one that wasn't oh nice and it was horrible, and that was the one at, in Orlando that serves Disney World. Yeah, I, yeah, yep. I could see that one being shitty. It was shitty. Wow, dude, look at this shit. How do these rooms not get blown away by a fucking hurricane or some shit? This is insane, dude. Yeah, Four Seasons water. doesn't put up with that hurricane bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when we call, when Maggie calls them now, Sevy, if she calls, she when she calls the directly to the to the Bora Bora, you know, number. Yeah, they answer. Hey, Maggie. <laughs> like <laughs> we got the bat ring going with them. So I, I ass- playing shit. I assume you just that water. You could just go in that water. That you just wow. Oh my god, dude! Wait yeah, till you see this amazing. room. Oh my goodness! Oh, I can't make it big. Yeah, th- this looks incredible. Wow. And what are you doing there? Do you have any plans there, like to snorkel, or is it just sit around? Yeah, just, or? just hang out and watch the kids fight and whine. Okay. <laughs> That's Bora perfect. Bora. That that sounds good. Uh, I, I I hope we can do a podcast when you're there. That'll be awesome. Oh, the background will be amazing. So many friends were trying to get me to join this this uh, local. Uh, I don't know what you call it. It's like a country club, but it's a hotel that has a social club, and it's got four or five uh, Sam Fox uh, restaurants in it, and. Uh, I was I was entertaining the prospects of joining and I'd heard that they have a early breakfast set up and for some reason I was imagining like a four seasons breakfast buffet like they had at Seychelles or Beijing or wherever the hell we've been because they always yeah. do a good job of that. But it wasn't, it was a continental breakfast. <laughs> and I I couldn't I couldn't get past that i mean like they got that holiday in fucking express the continental breakfast i don't want a continental right. breakfast it's right i was a kid i thought continental meant shitty yeah did they have the little boxes of cereal i don't want a continental breakfast bike or hat you know like and a, and a carton of milk hey dude i didn't even know where this is this so this is out this is south this looks like it's south of hawaii by uh i don't know a thousand miles three thousand miles you, I mean, you are going to be in the. This must be one of the most isolated places on the planet you're going to. I wonder how close this is to Easter Island. This is wild where you're going. You're going I don't know, the- but I would trust Four Seasons. They could put you down where the headhunters are and you'd have a good experience. You're 4,000 <laughs> miles off the coast of Peru and about 4,000 miles off the coast of Australia. You're like right in the middle of the fucking South Pacific. Oh, that's cool. I mean, you probably knew all that. <laughs> That place looked amazing just to get up early and watch the sunrise with some coffee and a good book and just sit there as the water's calm and just... And about 7,000 miles south of uh, Alaska and another, like, looks like 7,000 miles north Sydney, of... I went, in, I went in with Bruce on that boat. Oh, yeah, congratulations on, on the Greek islands. Yeah, we're just gonna, the boat's going to live in Athens and we'll go see it. Do people sleep on it? Yes, Sleep six comfortably, Bruce says. So I, I hear that is like three comfortably. <laughs> right, right, right. Kind of like a 12-man tent. You, six are going to hate life. 12 is <laughs> impossible. I'm going down to uh, um, Carson for a semifinal. In the Airbnb, it's like two bedrooms, sleeps 15. I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, <sleeps> Carson. <laughs> <laughs> they're uh they're doing a semifinal in like eight weeks uh at that venue again so basically the way the way crossfit's done it is they've um out they're letting um they're letting or they've they've outsourced their semifinals and so the guy dylan will uh Malinsky, the guy who runs uh Wadapalooza, is in charge of the semifinal for the western north america and it's going to be down in carson is so that go- the loud and lively crowd yeah Yep. Uh, O'Keefe used to be there. And now O'Keefe is now the CEO of uh, Fraser's company, um, HWPO. And so you would know Dylan. Uh, you would know Dylan if you saw him. He's awesome. He was the, uh, I'm sure you guys had a, a very, you would be fond of him. He, um, 
He was the kid that uh, back in the early days was the floor commentator with Kiki. Really handsome, shorter guy, buff. Uh, he was the floor commentator at for the cross for CrossFit stuff. And you so say Kiki, I'm just I'm there still. You're still thinking about Kiki. Mm-hmm. And so, so basically, they're having an event down there. So I was going to go down there, hopefully, and uh, film the behind the scenes in eight weeks if I get clearance, final clearance from CrossFit. Matter of fact, Dylan just texted me. I got to call him on this. Is over. So they've so they've outsourced the semifinals. Yeah. So basically, what happens is they have the open, and then they have a virtual quarterfinal. That's just you know just what it do these workouts online and film it, and then the certain people who quote from there before they go to the games, they have another live. Is, it, event. is this a cost saving structure? Yes, I, I would ha- imagine so. Yeah, it, because then the the cost is put off on someone else. I have to imagine though that soon they're going to get rid of that too. I have to imagine. Is there only one semifinal? No, um, five, six. Yeah, a handful of them. Two in North America, one in Europe, stuff one like in that. Australia, but not a lot. Not like seventeen or anything like that. Like back in the day, maybe only four. Excuse me. Is there going to be no black people at the games? No, there will not be any black. People. <laughs> Team competition, maybe, but no, not an individual. Um, no, I don't think so. Probably no Middle Eastern people. <laughs> Probably no Jews. Would you call, call Jews Middle Eastern? No, I think they're. Uh, I think they're. Uh, they're smack dab in the Middle East. <laughs> Dude, they, they've fucking been there forever. Would you say Armenians are Asian? No. Even though we're in Asia, the country's in Asia? No. I don't see it that way, but I don't know. I don't. I told my kids they're half Middle Eastern, half Asian. People don't bucket so nicely in my world. (laughs) (laughs) That's because you're not racist. I had Aaron, speaking of Asians, I had Aaron Ginn here last night. Oh, how was that? I, I had him on the show once. I'd like to have him on again. Was he a good guest? Yeah, he was a great Mm -hmm. fucking guest. He's an amazing guest. Easy. Just sit back and let him go. I have I have a lot of admiration for him. He's a dear friend. I had Jay Cooey on too, dude, and it's crazy. Um, We were. I was so so Matt does a show by himself, uh, eleven a.m. on Tuesday mornings, and we were talking yesterday, and we were talking about the difference in potency. Of a show, if you have if you have a hundred thousand people watching ver- who are just CrossFitters versus one thousand people who are watching who are just affiliates, and you would much rather have the thousand show with the people who are just affiliates. It makes you just such more. It's such a more potent show of like real fucking people, right? Like you want like if if you're in the space and you want to talk to the people in the community, talking to the affiliates is is where it's at. It gives you it's where you can do your strongest messaging, have the deepest conversations, the most relevant, and um. It's interesting. It's like that. There's a couple of guests who are like that. It's like that when you have Chris Cooper on, but Jay Cooey too. It's like that show might not have a lot of viewers, but holy shit, the response you get from smart people is out of this world. All right, Sevy, let's do this. Let's do the next Broken Science thing at, at my house in Santa Cruz. And let's Please. have, uh, have uh, what's his name out and get with Emily on a date. And let's do. Who's let's what's his do- name? Cooey? I'm sorry. Who's what's his name? No, I get, talk to Emily about a date. Oh yeah, yeah. And let's invite let's invite affiliates and let's do it through your show and we'll just yes. take we'll take like the first fifty from when you say go. Yes. That, that can make it out. Yes. Uh, yeah. Taco truck. Yeah, and I'll have and I'll have uh, Mijos come and do the tacos. Big fire. And you know what? Yeah, we'll have fires and let's and it's nice because. <laughs> Like we're almost out of chimney time here in Arizona mm. and there's no such thing in Santa Cruz. It's year round. You need that chimney at night. Right. right. When that sun goes down. Yeah. Dude, Greg, are you serious? You, you will do that. Yeah. 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 Pick a date. I need to be in town. And, uh, yeah, that's important. And, uh, <laughs> and you'll do, and you'll Emily do and, we'll, and, we'll, and you'll do a few ups. Yeah. Yeah. God, dude, that would be awesome. Yeah. yeah that'd, that'd be, be super cool. Okay. Yeah, I love it. And uh, um, and uh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. That would be fantastic. Good. I, yeah. Yeah. Let's I, set that up. Let's set that up soon. I think I have to be May six in uh, in L.A. Um, for a, 
a screening and uh you know adam and nathan all made an animated feature in a uh, film in uh, spain the mm -hmm. animators were there and you should get great animators in spain at a good cost but all of the voices are celebrities of the different characters and so they're having a, a screening for the thing and the celebrities that did the voices and they like it because i guess they could kind of work from home right watch the clip add the voice on the right equipment and send the send the the drive in and and you're in the movie but they're all going to be there and it's kind of kind of cool but uh oh that's true shelby neal is black that is true there um uh shelby neal is a uh white red-headed freckle girl but her dad's black i forgot about that so there will be a black girl in the games that's i apologize you're right absolutely it's half black you're black you know, uh, according well it depends it, it depends on who you go with uh the kkk said if you were one percent black you're black but um hitler had a less stringent uh, Did he? yeah it was 20 percent. if you were 20 percent um jew um then you were jew but 19 percent, you're still good to go you don't get thrown in the oven and and, and you know it's crazy i was reading about that in, uh, when i was researching otto warburg and uh what's fascinating is the, the nazis thought the kkk was way too harsh like, because they studied the KKK to see how they <laughs> operate, to see how the liberals operate. And they're like, dude, that 1% rule is like too stringent. They're like, they're like, you got to take the clothes <laughs> off for God's sakes. Yeah. You can get a better uniform, right? I'm not even joking. <laughs> there's a whole, there's a whole thing on that. Hey, and you know who else they studied? Um, who's the Democrat president who put all the Japanese in jail and took their land? They thought he was too harsh, too. Roosevelt? Was it? Yeah. Yeah. They thought he was fucking too harsh. Oh, they gosh. thought it wasn't cool that he wasn't letting the Jews flee and, and, and make exceptions to them through Ellis Island. And they thought it was crazy what he did to the Japanese. It's it, the. Uh, yeah, it's wild. It's, it's, it's funny how even scumbags raid each other. <laughs> There's always got to be someone lower. Someone I know. Worse. I know. You think I'm bad. Check out what this guy's doing. Hey, Greg, you know th that there's this, um, you know that if we like passed a law right now, that uh, the only way if you're black or white that you're allowed to procreate is that you have to choose someone who's of the opposite color, right? So if you're, so I apologize to the Hispanics and Chinese you're, or Asians, you don't get to be in this story, but uh, you just, we just won't let them breed at all. But so if you were to do that and you were to make a blend, you were just to say, Hey, in order to like, just expedite fucking equity, if you're white, you have to have sex with someone who's black. And if you're black, you have to procreate with someone who's white. You know that we would turn into the, you know how it works in the Dominican Republic, right? They're all black. Oh, they're all black. But now the racism is on shades. So the lighter skins, blacks look down on the darker skin blacks. Like there's no, it's just to show that like the racism is just in between people's ears, just that hierarchy, the caste system. It's just, it's just the people it has nothing. It has nothing yeah, to you, do with. You need to color. realize that you, you, you can devolve into this Hutu Tutsi thing where you've mm. got indistinguishable people, same culture, same religion, same background, same the Irish too, right? The Irish too. Like bloods and crips. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, the, and and the, didn't the, the Irish red hats like, versus the blue hats. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, um, the Nortenos and Sereños, they're the um, yes. the two Mexican gangs here. One of them represents like the Mexicans who've been here for at least one generation, and the other one represents the the Mexicans who are um uh who are uh, uh, uh children of farmers, and those two the, they're the bloodiest warriors in fucking in our area. And the the dividing line there, Sevi, is on Main Street when you cross the Pajaro. Right. You slip into into Sereno country from Norteño country. Uh, Rambler skin tones are so stupid. <laughs> God, I'm so excited about doing that thing in uh, in Larkin Valley. That'll be awesome. Yeah, me too. Good, set that up. We'll, can we'll Susan come? Yeah, I'd, yeah all right, all right. I'd appreciate that. Right. I hope I can. Yeah, I'd yeah. love to come. And bring bring sweet Caleb out too. Caleb, oh, for sure, Heidi. <laughs> she already paid a uh, dollar ninety nine. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Look at reserving she my paid spot. A dollar ninety nine to reserve her spot. Yeah. And what about Sleeky? I saw Sleeky wanted to come. <laughs> for sure, Sleeky. Duh. Yeah. See, we got we got two people already. And Allison, come home from Costa Rica. I I, I haven't seen her in forever. 
She was just on last week. No, but I haven't seen her like in person. I haven't been able to put my eyes on her in forever. Oh, piano lessons. Your music teacher's there. Coming. Come, oh, 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 brushing up on the shit that you should have practiced. Yeah. <laughs> Riley wants to learn for for at least for uh, Maggie's birthday. What is that? Is that some sort of, what, who who what's for Elise? Is that Beethoven. like some Beethoven? Yeah. All right, you uh, guys I'm, are the best. All right, I'm excited thanks, about Santa Cruz, about yeah, coming tomorrow and about doing a doing a gig there. Hey, let's um conference yeah. call um when you come yesterday uh, tomorrow. Let's call um uh, Emily together. Perfect. All right. I love it. All right, yeah, dude. Thank uh, you. I feel better about this material than ever. You know, I I fully own it now. It's uh it's uh, I almost don't need prep. Yeah, it was fantastic in Arizona. It was thank you. Really I, I really enjoyed yeah. that and everyone that came out. And I again I, I think that some metric of the success was the drop in of David Hastinens, you know, to have a a world renowned physicist crash your uh, broken science party <laughs> 95 years of age is pretty interesting good guy to look up on wikipedia too hastenens h-a-s-t-e-n-e-n-s -E -E but he showed up at eight in the morning 95 years old hours early and and uh, we took him in and uh, maggie fed him <laughs> it's incredible yeah, you you know you'd you'd hope to be able to do that to set up an environment where world famous physicists would drop by uninvited and you'd have to make them breakfast in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Right? I mean, yeah. It, yeah. You leave you leave out dog shit, you attract flies. You leave out Greg Glassman, you attract world class physicists. I love it. Yeah, totally. That's a good party. You leave out All blow, right, and you attract Diddy. All right. Thanks, Greg. <laughs> Thanks, Love, hey, hey, the Diddy thing, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's Let's like it someone's Diddy. decided he's done. Yeah. Like God's done with him. Yeah. And this thing is going to crescendo, and it, it's it's so damning, and he's so fucked, and I still – I haven't seen any evidence, but we've seen this process enough. Yes, yes. That, like he's already he's already losing sponsors, and the, and the shit people are saying on him, like they're friends, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. He if he's done nothing, he's still fucked. <laughs> totally. A hundred a hundred percent. Um I haven't heard one person come out to defend him. Like, like, like I don't I don't have I don't have sense of what he's done or not quite. You know, I understand there was nudity and drugs. I get that. But well, they're trying to they're trying to defame they're trying to defame him by calling him gay too. And that's the part that just keeps turning me off. Like, I don't give a fuck if he's gay. They just, and, and it, what's crazy is, and it's, it's, it's all black rappers who are doing yeah. it to him. Well, what I'm saying is, I don't know, I don't know where this, I don't have any sense of the, of the veracity of any allegations, but I feel certain he's on his way to prison, which mm -hmm. is an odd right. thing. Like the machines, right. the right. machines turn on and it's grinding. Right. Whether he should be thrown in or not is, is something, but. They are lowering him into the grinder, into the chipper. Right, right. Yeah, he's gonna end up like Weinstein, you know, or Epstein. Yeah, one of the Steens. <laughs> P. Diddy, P. P. Diddy Steen, Diddy Steen. Oh, and there's and there's nothing he can do. No, nope. no. Nope. Someone in the someone in the pile doing blow didn't want to be in the pile doing blow. Right. They made it. They she was right. made to do it. Right. right. <laughs> Maybe do coke and get in that pile of, of people. I did a bunch of blowing MDMA at Diddy's house and got fucked by five dudes. Yeah, like all against my will. But then the other story like, is that like three times a week for years. <laughs> but you know what, Greg? The other story is that the, the the other narrative that they keep saying is that no one was fucking the girls and they were all upstairs, but you had to go down below. And when you went down below, it was just gay orgies. <sighs> That's like a, a the theme that goes over and over that the girls were just a beard. It's a bizarre. It's bizarre, and I keep thinking like, why do I care? He has he had a billion fucking dollars. Like, what 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 was he gonna do with it? I was having to explain myself to the New York Times like, and you had beer and wine at these parties, <laughs> right? And I'm like, what? Yeah, <laughs> and you paid for that with company money. <laughs> 
Uh, no, my, it's all my money, including the company money. <laughs> I don't know what you're used to dealing with, but there ain't no money that ain't mine. <laughs> yeah. I, that's fucking nuts. I forgot about what's You make payroll with my money. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Such a crazy that's world. And Emily's saying, you tell me you haven't been to New York Times parties where they're fucking each other? Try to tell me that. And they, they're <laughs> like, wow. This is weird. I never went to a CrossFit party where I saw anyone fucking. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> um, that's not true. Well, I didn't witness that one. Okay. It, it was happening, but I didn't witness that one. I got and it. it. I and, took, and, and I just took media they weren't CrossFit for that. employees. Neither of them were CrossFit employees. I took media hit for that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At the at the at the at the rogue party, one famous person fucked another famous person with a bunch of famous people watching, and I heard about it the next morning because I go to bed at nine o'clock during those things. And uh, dude, it, was, it wasn't even my company. I never even I I I was never even in that house. Just to be clear, <laughs> <laughs> what? I was never even in that house where that happened. No, me neither. I didn't make it to yeah. the second. I didn't make it to the fun house. We went to the yeah. boring house and then yeah. went home. Hey, and in defense of Bill and Katie, it didn't happen in the rogue house either. But, um, but it did happen in the house. Oh, it, that was the well. That company's defunct. The VCs bought it and destroyed it. The again faster house. Right. Yeah, that's. I don't know. I don't know what happened to them. I don't know what happened to John Gilson. But um, that it happened over there. He got he he picked up some venture capital and they got rid of him. But hey, that being said, like I don't have an issue. I don't have an issue with that either. No, I wasn't with, bothered with, by it. At least yeah, I, I don't have an issue with two me. super hot athletes living in a house together and fucking the bejesus out of each other all over the house. Like, do what you want to do. I don't got like, I don't have a problem with it. If they, if if it had been my party and they'd asked, they got married. To do that I would yeah. have said yes. So yeah, right. Unfit for office. Right, and they got married and they lived happily ever after. Yeah, I don't doubt. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be getting in the way of fate. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, John Gilson <laughs> sold to Extreme Training. Oh man, anything so uh, written with an X where yeah. there's not supposed to be an X is just screams tool. Wow, it's not. It's not like some some Chinese thing with uh, with Mark Wahlberg <laughs> investing. You know, <laughs> you, you know what's crazy? I can't even believe the UFC succeeded with that name. I love the UFC, but it, I feel the same about the word Ultimate. Ultimate and anything X. Like, I can't believe X Games succeeded. It's so fucking cheese dick. X Games, the ultimate fighting championships. That's just so. Sevi, we used to yeah. play this game where you'd go to it from at Blockbuster where they had the boxes of the videos. Yeah. And I said, pick pick any any box at random that has an explosion on it mm -hmm. or boobs, uh -huh. or in the text uses the word poignant. Uh huh. So if it's the poignant tail, eligible box, explosion or tits, start with any poignant tits or explosion movie. Yeah. And I can get you to any other one through adjacency, just moving. Oh. Up. Yeah. And so, like, here's one with a tit. But look, this one over here is a is an explosion, and the one underneath is a poignant tail of two. You know, and you can work your way through the store that way. Just looking at tits, poignancy, and fireballs. Yeah, wow. <laughs> it's something for everyone. Yeah. If you don't they like if you don't like tits and you don't like explosions, you're gonna love poignancy. Yeah. I like that. God, I hated that. <laughs> and the VH, the tapes, that whole thing. I didn't like that phase. Did you, Sebi? Um. I'm really horrible at picking movies. I can literally sit in front of a TV and watch trailers for 30 or 40 minutes and then just go to bed. As a matter of fact, that's what happens to me 99% of the time. And so the video store was no different. I just couldn't pick anything. I would be, I would be, um, it, it's like when we do the schedule for the podcast, Susan will ask me, when do you want to do it? And I go, dude, do not do that. Please <laughs> let, just pick a time. I cannot choose shit. Why didn't you like it? I don't know. I think I, I think I felt that uh, something was better than tape. Oh, 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 oh. 
the DVD thing was like a no brainer. Cause that, mm -hmm. look, we had, we had the CD replaced the eight track, but I'm still VHSing. Oh, really? Is that how it had the order? I don't and remember. Then, yeah, that. We, we, we were listening to music on CDs and we were still doing VHS and then the Blu-ray. Oh, thing, oh yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the Blu-ray. That was the big disc. I guess. Yeah. And so, yeah, and so if the little disc. cassette was outdated, the big ones seemed stupid to me, too. Right. OK, I see what you're saying. And the rewinding shit was crazy, too. And we yeah. still put stuff on tape, though, right? Magnetic tape's still a thing. It's huge. Yeah. Uh, Avi's music teacher has has that in his office. Big magnetic tape thing. Hey, let's get those violins ordered. I want you to. I want you to have this experience. The squawking okay. isn't at all unpleasant. It makes kind of a neat sound. There's a there's a a drama to the violins noise, and it's really interesting. When, before the kids can play, you really get to hear the instrument. Right? It's not music. It's the noise the instrument makes. What's the name but of I'm the story? Right? Of Deadwood heavy. Oh. And every time there was any kind of bloodletting, there was some some fucking nail biting violin going on, right? Yes. God, you have a good memory. What's the name of the violin store? Uh, the Fiddle Factory, Fiddle Farm, Fiddle Sticks. I don't know. I'll send you the link. Well, we got to get those ordered though. Okay. It's pretty comical. Riley, Riley is so proud and holds it with this just great flair and she exaggerates the movements. And, and, and Rhett's standing there like we'd asked him to put his thumb up his ass while we took his picture. I mean, he's literally <laughs> embarrassed. Oh, shit. <laughs> he can't believe it. You know, it's such a little boy thing. He's just like, fucking A, man. <laughs> Playing the violin. And I told him, if you don't like it, we can get you an accordion. Following my musical footsteps, play that thing proudly after you've had a, an accordion. <laughs> That's what your dad made you play. Yeah, yeah. That was, I I wanted to be in a rock band and get a bunch of pussy. It sounded like a great idea when I was ten years old, and so my dad got me accordion lessons. And the get out was no music, you can be free. And you lost virginity <laughs> at twenty five. Right, it delayed everything. If I could just get in the rock Oh my goodness, that's funny. I did watch the uh, TED Talk uh, violin uh, video you sent me where the guy plays Mario Brothers. Yeah, that was cool, right? It's crazy cool. There's a parenting lesson there. The kid, the kid's told that he has to earn his his uh, Mario Brothers time by playing the violin. So by the time he's 14 years old, he's playing in symphonies. <laughs> Good Just to get to that fucking Mario Brothers crack. <laughs> hey, hey uh, so um, I signed my kids up for a surf camp that's happening. I should actually send it to Maggie, the dates. It's four days long, and it's in June. But my kids don't really swim so good, right? So oh, I signed shit. them up for 40 swim lessons in the next 60 days. Perfect. And so, and so they did day two, and, and it, it's with a swim team. Like a little kid swim team. Good. So, but everything, everything my kids do, they're so fucking good at, right? That because they've just practiced shit over and over. Well, I've taken them to the swim thing. The teacher gave them their own lane every day. The two days we've gone, at least one of my kids have cried. They can't even swim across the pool. It's fucking crazy, dude. <laughs> Carnage every time they show up to swim. Lessons. It's so fucking crazy, dude. The teachers, the swim coach is like, okay, Matosi boys, you get your own lane over here because <laughs> they got the board. Other kids are just like coming out of the water doing strokes. My kids still have the boards and they're kicking across. It's nuts, dude. I'm like, God, I'm a shitty parent, but it's going to be a good 40 Amazing. days. Hey, in two days, they're like a thousand time percent better swimmers than they were before. You know That's what I mean? Cool. Yeah, just so I'm doing the qualitative and quantitative analysis with the kids, the math and English related yeah. things. I'm drowning my, my outsource list now includes uh, uh, music, uh, guns, uh, radio. <laughs> right? They're gonna learn, they're gonna learn ham music, radio, guns, radio, yeah. music, guns, radio, bees, um, fishing slash boating, distinct from sailing. Uh, martial arts, and there was another one that's not on there. I don't Wait, know. Wait, so you're gonna get a, a you're gonna do a, a, a um, a, what are those things called? Not a beehive, but a um, you're getting a beehive, yeah. What well, you're putting Four it on your colonies property. of uh, Santa Cruz born queens from local vegetation. We've got southeast facing slopes. Kara and her bee guys say that the yard's perfect. 
So I'm gonna try and meet with them while we're there too. Uh, um, which yard are you gonna do it in? You're gonna do it in your in Larson Santa Valley. Days. Wow, my kids will probably learn about bees then by by proxy. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. I want to cool. see him put the queen in the whole the whole bit. It's exciting. Yeah, tell, yeah, I'm coming out. Can I bring my kids to watch that? Absolutely. And then, my, and if your kids aren't in town and the bees need help, my kids will do it. That's crazy. Absolutely. Uh, Sevi, remember you're black. Most black people uh, don't like the water. Fair. Fair enough. Hey, Greg, um, I, I want to ask you, sorry, before you go, since I have you here, I might as well bring this up really quick and um, ask you if you remember this. Someone asked me if my kid did um, ISR. And my kid and my kid did do ISR. Um, and, is, this um, in, is this Kauai? Yeah, my kid did do ISR at Greg's house in um, – let me see if I can uh, – entire screen. Let me see if I can uh, – That was a great – I know what you're going to show. It was an epic moment. Yeah. So we were, out, we were out on your street, and my kid Avi saw Joanne walk up. I don't know how to play it. But do you remember he just got out in the road and started he ran a mile down the road. Look, there's Robbie. Avi just took off. He saw Joe, he saw the ISR instructor and just ran a mile down the road. Do you remember that? Yeah. Took off. He's fucking three years old. He's like, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> he's just crying. Look at him. He's like yeah. fucking he's running from this. from the tsunami. Yeah. Looking back for. Yeah. Got the helmet on. Completely still. fucking damaged from ISR. <laughs> <laughs> that was wild, wasn't it? Oh my god. Yeah, I mean, you're watching your kid get waterboarded. Right. That's rough for everyone. <laughs> All right, you gotta go. <laughs> All right, love you. Love Bye. you, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, okay, Matt. Come early. Bye, Greg. Soon, Bye. Great Bye. seeing you. Yeah, that was wild. He's like, we, we were we, we were playing in the driveway and the ISR instructor, the, it was the inventor, the founder of ISR rolled up and he had worked with her the day before and he just saw her and just fucking threw down his, he was on a, um, on a scooter, just threw it down and just started running. <laughs> what is, I'm out of here. Oh, Greg paid for my babies to do ISR. Such a gift. Oh, that's awesome. I saw that um, someone sent me a link today to uh, the author of um, Matt Fraser's, I guess Matt Fraser has a book, a biography. Mm -hmm. And the author of his book proudly claim, is excited because he writes for the, ready for this, Vice, the New York Times, and Rolling Stone. <sighs> if I wrote for either, wow. if I wrote for one of those, I would well, Vice be is gone now. I would be so fucking embarrassed. I wonder if Matt knew that. Why would you choose someone like he probably that? Probably chose it on that, dude. No. Yes, because I don't think he looks like somebody who's really like looking into the validity or how, you know, journalism is working, if you want to call it that, with these certain media outlets. And so I mean, just it just saw, makes me like, think every it made me think everything in his biography is a lie. Well, right, because most of the shit that comes out of those uh, two media outlets is an exaggerated, false. Yeah, or it's just a just a straight up fucking lie. Piece yeah. Of bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, the trifecta of libtards, isn't it? It's wild. <clears throat> I don't think Matt's woke. I don't think he is either. I don't think he is. Yeah, he he. I mean, when we, I did the podcast with him, he basically said that like, uh, he was in a room full of people who were all vaccinated, and he wasn't. I mean, he, he's, I think he's pretty like, he's a pretty independent dude. Yeah. And the ironic part is if that side of him was more forward facing, he would probably have like a, such a more ravenous loyal audience because like, if you don't stand for anything, right. Like yeah. you stand for nothing kind of deal. Yeah. So it's like, if you're just changing with the wind and then you're always trying to navigate through those questions without ever really having to like land on a solid, like, this is my opinion or this is how I feel about that. It only works for so long. And before he was always like that, but you had the big distraction of he's this five time champ. Right. And so we just wanted to see him just fucking dominate when he competed. But the second that's not there and we go to watch him, you're looking for like, okay, now what am I watching? Right. And since he didn't give himself in any of the media and he still tried to just tow this like middle of the road line, 
then people said, well, fuck, there's nothing there to watch. And I think that's what you're seeing now. The, 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 what's happened is, is that people are afraid to talk about their values. And then they also think that just because, um, they have values, they have to hate someone who doesn't have those values. And that really sucks. It's like, it's like, I remember that with smoking cigarettes, you quit smoking. Everyone I knew who ever quit smoking cigarettes always would be like, I hated, sm I hate smoking. And I think they, I think that's just like, I don't believe them. I gotta know smoking's fun. You love it. It's just fucking horrible for you. It's like, fuck diet. Like you can say all the bad shit you want about diet Coke or hamburgers at Jack in the box, but those are, they're, they're good. A diet Coke is fucking so fucking good on a hot day. You're a little tired, chug down an ice cold diet Coke. Um, there's nothing better than fucking going through the drive through after you've been driving for fucking 12 hours, getting a diet Coke and a fucking burger at Jack Mox. Is there any, is, is it horrible for you? Absolutely. fucking -lutely. But that's what makes us human beings, this tension between what we think and what we do. Mm -hmm. And um, the fact that, um, that you can't just be, you, you can't just say, Hey, I just not, I'm just not want I'm not going to support uh, leadership that wants to condone or normalize pedophilia. It's fucking nuts. That's not politics. The pol people's politics and values are just getting, conf pe people are using those words interchangeably or it's getting conflated. Yep. Going back to that article about Boeing, dude, that is exactly what, ha that is what's going on at CrossFit HQ. A yep. hundred, th that's what happened when I was there. Um, it was it basically just, um, um, yeah, Diet Coke might be gay. That might be another um, thing with it. It might be gay also. Oh, hey, David. Might be, it might be gay and wonderful. Oh, by the way, Pat, um, uh, you you made a presupposition that you weren't invited. You said, I've given thousands and I'm not invited. Well, the thousands you've given have nothing to do with you being invited. The fact that you have to ask if you're invited has to do with whether you're invited. Um, so you saw Sleeky and Heidi didn't um, ask. They just demanded. <laughs> yeah, I swim great. I'm a fucking, I'm a fish. I swim great. Caroline. Uh, yeah, what, 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 that's exactly what, um, that's exactly what happened there. And that now, and now it, it is what's happened. The company's under complete paralysis. Yep. And I, I was saying before that the only leadership is coming from Dave, but no, I, I don't think that's also true. I think the leadership is coming from Dave and by leadership, I mean, leadership for, to the community to the world of CrossFitters, but then it's also coming in from uh, outside media. People like Andrew Hiller. Mm -hmm. Well, the shitty thing is, is like with Boeing, once they uh, fired all the good engineers, like if we're just using that parallel, it's not long that the ones that, that are, were good that are still there leave. It, right, right. Well, the thing is, is I think a lot of people stay because they didn't want the job and they want the money. And so they don't leave. I mean, that's, I mean, well, of course, but right. only that's going to go for so long too, right? Like if you're, uh, whether it's both. I don't know, dude, CrossFit. people will stay. I mean, they'll just stay because they know they don't have to work anymore. People just know they don't have to work. The people just know you, Hey, you don't have to work anymore. You don't have to make anything. You don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. Hey, think of it this way. Good point. Your show is a track. Your show. You've been doing your show. How many weeks have you done your show? Um, I think that, I think this was either week eight or week nine. Yeah, and I would already I would already consider it the biggest hub and, and, and congregation of affiliates anywhere in the world consistently. Like that's how easy it was to because there's just nothing being done anywhere. That's just true. Like, just like that. And and because you speak uh, honestly and truthfully. And, and and I'm not you know, obviously there's play you know, you could pull up you could put pull up a face group Facebook group that um uh like two brain might have where there's, you know, 5,000 affiliates, but I'm just talking about like a weekly talking about business. Uh, at some point, every show has some mention of, of, you know, best business practices or stories that happened in the affiliate or around the affiliate. Yeah. I mean, it's just what I know, right? So what I've done yeah. for 10 years, it's how I grew up through like operational business type stuff. It's everything I've learned and dealing with people and, and dealing in business. And so, yeah, it always goes that way. Uh, do you think Boeing's issue partially stems from their Seattle foothold? For sure. And, and the, the truth is, is anytime you hear anyone's from um, Seattle or Oregon or Boston or San Francisco, or, I mean, you should just think you should run for the hills. You should, you're basically hiring someone who doesn't know how, who can't work.
or the Rolling Stones or the New York Times. Yeah, <laughs> they, they just can't work. And by work, I mean they can't put two Lego pieces together and be like, look, I made something. They just can't. <laughs> I don't know why. They just can't. And then, uh, and then people who get around that environment, that article explained it perfectly. It's seen as work. When you say stuff like, man, we live inside, we're, we're really looking for more female announcers. Oh, we would really like to add a black uh, country manager to the uh, team. Like anytime you hear that, they think that's work. Right. Right. And in progress. Hard. And, yeah. and that, that's like somehow moving something forward. Like, how do you choose people based on that shit? Or, hey, here's the thing. Yeah, it's. I mean, there is a time. There is a time to choose people based on. I mean, I mean, we. On the flip side, let me go the other way. You, you, it's okay to choose people based on their characteristics, like like basketball. Like you want, you want a dude who. Um, uh, but again, that's like merit for the job being done, right? So right. you're not even really choosing. Like you, first you pick all the tall guys, and then it's the best one that plays. Right, because uh, again, but a like, short guy could still get in there. Yes, but he's going to get in there. Yeah, how? That's a bad example. He's going to have to be amazing. Right, exactly. But he's getting yeah. in on this merit still. Right. Right. And then what's right. happening is like I love this um, thought that's been in my head always with like after the Jay Cooey show, which is he goes first when somebody asks you a question. Mm -hmm. First, realize the model in which you have to accept to answer the question. Right, which is like fantastic. So when you had said like you know there are things that we're going to pick people by characteristics. Take the MB NBA. Well, now like the model of that is we just need a person that's going to fit certain characteristics to be successful on the basketball court. Right. Right. So right. you're still basing it off merit, but you're going to start with, hey, generally speaking, the taller people are going to do well because they're closer to the hoop. Right. And so you bring them all in and then somebody who's shorter will get in on their merit because they're, they're just amazing. They're just that, that good. What do you think about the NFL saying like, hey, every time you choose a new head coach, you have to interview at least one black person and one woman? I, I think that that is their way of trying to say that they're still doing efforts in DEI, but they're not willing to lose the money on just ushering somebody in just because of skin color. Because they, they at the end of the day, that franchise, the NFL, whatever team is hiring, they still need to run a business and they still need to make money. And they know that. If but you could say the same thing about Boeing, but look at there. It, it's good. There's just no when you start doing that, there's no leadership because the lead, the actual leadership, Sousa, the tip of the spear actually thinks that they're working by using words like inclusive instead of saying, hey, squatting below parallel. It's squatting below parallel month. I'm going to let's make a shitload of videos about squatting below parallel. Right. Instead, and, it's like, hey, look, we got a black person as a videographer. <laughs> right, right. We're going to celebrate this first. It's the first yeah. whatever, whatever, yeah. whatever, right? Yeah. yeah. For this company, yay. But the difference it's not even we have a first black videographer. It's like, hey, um, we're considering hire. We're, we're going to hire a black videographer. It's like, <laughs> We've done our job home. today. So yeah. a great meeting. Yeah. But I, I think, too, it just depends on the feedback loop. So in the case of the NFL, if we hire you as a head coach, in 16 weeks, we're going to know how you did, right? You're going to go through training. We're going to watch you and your leadership skills. We might have, ah, maybe this guy's going to work out. Then you start playing games. You start losing. There's an immediate feedback loop. You might get fired halfway through the season, right? But when you have something like Boeing, and of course, in the, in the case of what Greg was talking about, is first everybody who is on the, hey, we hired the so-and-so, and yay, we think this is productive and doing good for the business. Um, their stock price goes up. So their feedback loop is, A, it's a lot longer before they see the consequences of their actions. But in the short term, they might even be rewarded for those actions. And then over the long term, as it plays out, those companies tend to just, you know, going into the dirt or they change their yeah, ways. I don't know if they can change their ways. I think they can. I th we've seen examples of that happen. And, and the way that you have to do it is you have to like run out all the 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 people at the very top that are in agreement with this ESG DEI uh, initiatives and starting there and like move them out of the way so you can bring in real leadership and and you can bring the focus back to what needs to be done. You're optimistic. Hey, you know what I just realized? What's that? Um, how do I go to uh, learn more? How do I go to leaderboard and oh leaderboard? 
I'm going to the CrossFit Games leaderboard. I just realized something. 2023 uh, CrossFit Games um, Division Adaptive um, Upper Extremity. Wow. Um, oh, Lower Extremity. Oh, they, oh, you can't find... Oh shit! On the on the CrossFit Games leaderboard, you can't find dwarfs. Isn't it short stature? Oh well, I'm I'm at the 2023 games. Uh, look at um. Oh, is that what it is? But but either way, I don't I don't see that either. Uh -huh. Um, uh, adaptive, uh, yep. and then it says uh upper lower multi extremity. I can't see the drop down when you click oh, it. Oh oh oh! I just then, see upper extremity. And then men and women. You know what? I don't think that there's a fittest female dwarf in the world. You're right. I mean, there is. We just don't know about him. Sevi was really listening to Suze's point. That he's being facetious. Oh. Those are the best comp those are the best comments. The one where like it's kind of a compliment, but it's also kind of an insult. I don't think Jake Chapman has ever said anything that's not facetious in the chat. <laughs> I don't think he has a sincere bone in his body. That's not facetious. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. I, I, cause that's interesting. I never, uh, how sexist of me. I never even thought about that. Fem fi uh, fittest, fittest, Just female door female or a, a, what was the word a short stature short stature uh crossfit i i don't think they have a um oh it, it's funny i put fittest and, and google tried to change it to hottest <laughs> <laughs> oh isn't that fucking crazy they tried to switch it to hottest female athletes fittest female short stature crossfit Huh. Short stature RX adaptive division. Yeah, I can't find anything. Interesting. All right. Um Oh, hottest female short star CrossFit athlete. Perhaps uh Sarah Sigmund's daughter. <laughs> Mike, and, and Mikey Swoosh. Hey, uh so today at um 4:30 on the barbell spin, I should see if he has it scheduled. YouTube. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he does. Okay. Uh, barbell spin. Um, uh, Jake Berman will be going against. Um, oh, uh, no, actually, I don't. See, uh, oh, notify me. Yep. Okay. Here we go. Uh, today at 4:30. Uh, 100 bar facing burpees for time. Colt Mertens versus Jake Berman. It's 4:30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh. Colt Mertens and Jake Berman will settle it once and for all when they go head-to-head -head live. Who can finish 100 bar facing burpees the fastest? Join us at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay, and then listen. After this, you have to come straight over to the 7 Podcast. Not even after this. It's going to be at 5.30. I think this show goes till 6. So at 5.30, we will uh, go live. And uh, we will see Tim Murray. Uh, unfortunately, that show is not free. You you do have to pay a one dollar entry fee. Where's Judy at? Minimum one dollar entry fee, and Judy will be watching to see uh, and counting the the money. She's our collector. And we know that uh, Asians are good at counting and of high moral uh, standard. And so you, um, Savon, do you hate the do you hate the category name because you think of yourself as short stature and them as dwarves? No, no, I no. I love the category name. I don't even care. I like it. Midget, dwarf, short stature. I, I would even, I would even pick like a, a a height, maybe even. Then what if you got someone with normal um, limbs? Like you know how their ratio is different with short stature people with dwarves. What, but what if you got like a normal dude that, uh, who's like four eleven? I guess you have to say. I guess you have to choose dwarf. I wonder if someone could enter that category and be and someone be like, you're not dwarf. Like if I do it, yeah, or or just like what? No, more like if I do it. 
And then I'm like, <laughs> I'm like don't you tell me what I identify They're like, as hey, wait don't. a minute. Yeah, your head's not uh, disproportionate to your uh, hands. Like, no, you Yeah, the, the proportions are all off here, sir. I'm sorry you don't qualify. Uh, so, yeah. Um, all right. Okay, I'm I'm pumped. I'm a little nervous. Uh, uh, he uh, Tim Murray's doing it live at his affiliate. Um, you can go over to maybe I'll pull up his Instagram real quick so you can see if if he is able to uh, sustain this. Um, his time will be uh, holy shit. His time will be fucking world class. Is true what Judy just said? I guess people um, already paying for the thing. Oh, yeah, you could pay. You could pay in advance. No, don't pay in advance. Pay when you come there so Judy can count it. Because I just yeah, want to yeah, be, yeah. I want to be, I want her to be able to, I want to be able to tell Tim uh, how much money we raised for him. Yeah. Basically, any money you donate, we're going to give to Tim so that he can use that money to pay for like his trip to the games. Dude, that looks pretty fast. I know. He looks good nuts. there. He yeah. looks good there. Can we bet on him? What is the fuck? Where's our Heat One bet? Tyler, what's going on, dude? I'm, let's fucking, let's put, let's put some money on this shit. God, that would be awesome. Yeah, because you're gonna be if you got if I got a hundred bucks riding on Tim, I'm paying attention to every one of those burpees. You know, it's like whenever you bet on sports, <laughs> like I could give a shit less about sports like 99 percent of the time until it's in playoffs because I just like the high stakes kind of stuff. Yeah, but if I put some money down, like if I even put 20 bucks on a football game, like I'm in on every play. You know what um, I mean? And and we could also have something where it's like, does he do the first 50 faster than them? Oh man, yeah, yeah. I'm tired of that heat one up not being my go-to betting app. That's what I'm saying. I'll scroll back and see anything that comes in early. No, you. Oh, uh, no, you don't have to. If they gave money, if you if show. you gave money today, it's mine. But if you get this morning, <laughs> it doesn't start counting until. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bring. I think of that as just a practice donation. It doesn't pop up in like the regular uh, comments, but looks like I got a comment on my show. Which is a backhanded compliment, as we are talking about, which is great. <laughs> oh, what's it say? I usually can't make it through much of Sousa's solo shows, but this one got me. Damn. <laughs> is that like Damn. a good thing or a bad thing? Damn. I usually fucking hate your shit, but you know yeah. what? I stuck around a little bit for this one. I kind of got, you didn't see any of it, right? No. I started getting crazy on this one chick's account. Like I was just having fun, just like snapped into my old like comedian ways. Yeah. And then Heidi made me like reel it in. She's like, so what are we doing? We're just, we're just making, we're just making fun of people now. I don't understand this segment. And then she I felt bad because she reminded me of like, she reminded me of Grace or like my mom or somebody who's like, and I'm not thinking about the human. Yeah. 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 And I was yeah, like, stop oh, trolling fuck. this bitch. All right. All right. Damn it. She's right. I should probably like <laughs> tone it down. <laughs> uh, so 5 30 tonight. Um, Maybe uh, we should go live on our Instagram at 5.30. Do you, do you have access? To, will you be here tonight, Susan, for the show? Oh, fuck. No, I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I have to move some stuff around. And I can't, okay. I'm not going to commit to that right now. Okay. Hey, if um, I'll text you and maybe at 5.30 or you can go live on our Instagram since I'm not allowed to have access to it and just tell people, hey, go over to the – <clears throat> go over to the YouTube channel. Yeah, I could do that. Um, the thing that I have is normally at 6 p.m. So I have that first half hour. Okay. So that, that you know, shouldn't be an issue. Just, we don't, um, I used to do that back in the day, three years ago, go live on my Instagram before every show just to tell people, hey, we're going live on YouTube, but that'll be good for this one. We haven't done that in uh, forever. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, Sevi, when are you getting Seth on for the real interview, not coffee pods and wads? The 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 jump ship guy, the guy with the girl with the what, what wife with the septum ring. <laughs> That's how I remember. I got a category. Did you see any of it on um, Pedro's show? Was no, that? was it good? Yeah, I Is think good? that. Yeah, I think Seth would. Yeah, I think you would have a blast with him. He used to be an undercover cop, dude. No shit. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I think yeah, and Pedro did a great Pedro did a great job with that with it as well. I do really like the guy. Yeah, I had a blast on his show, and I've been watching him and stuff like that. She doesn't have a septic ring. 
Oh, she doesn't? <laughs> Where did, oh, she, oh, oh, she doesn't? I thought your wife had a septum ring. Isn't that the one that goes here? This one? Yeah. That's oh, a septum fuck. ring, right? I apologize. I apologize. That's what I thought it was. Seth and Susan have a budding bromance. Probably true. He's very he's very popular right now. Two nose rings on the side. Oh. Close right. enough. <laughs> yeah, Seth. Um, all right. Oh, I saw a girl at the gym with the septum nipple rings. What? You can't have a septum nipple ring. I think that thing like that a... I think this thing in your nose right here is your septum. Right. I think he just means like the like a like the horseshoe ring, you know? Because usually, like people with their nipples pierced, it's like the bar thing. Oh, 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 dude! Aren't you? I'm just terrified. Oh, you want to hear it? Super. Why? Basic. Why? So, it, it, I do want to hear, but it, just yeah. really quick, is the reason why men like girls with tongue rings and nipple rings because then they just think that those girls are whores? Like, does, is that what the implication is that you just, you suck and swallow? Is that, I mean, I'm just seriously asking. I, I can't imagine wanting to see a pierce. What, what are you telling? What's the core? I don't, I honestly don't understand the courtship. Um, like I see holes in people's faces and I just think mental illness, like signs of like, uh Oh, something's wrong with you. You got, you actually went somewhere and punched a hole in your sail. So like, that just seems like, wow, I would, I'm more interested in a girl who like went somewhere and like, fucking did graffiti <laughs> and someone punched a hole in themselves. Do you know what I mean? Like did yeah, something yeah, yeah. like yeah. I'm interested in like, so you went and punched a hole in yourself. It's like the parents who pierce their kids ears. Like when they're babies, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? I just like, there's some sort of, you had some noise in the system and you reacted to it. But what is the, um, does sucking and swallowing make you a whore? No, sorry. You're right. You're right. Uh, 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 you're right. You're right. That was, that was, in, that, you're totally, fuck, you're totally right. Damn. But, but by that, I mean, it's, that does not what makes you whore, but wearing that as a symbol that you do it, like announcing it to the world that that is one of your traits. I, I don't think, uh, okay, fine. I won't even judge it. Uh, <laughs> let me, does, does, let me rephrase it. Does having a nipple ring mean you're a good mate because you suck and swallow? Is that, is that, is that? Yeah, Dan, I've been in like fucking 50 fights. You cunt. <laughs> I was in a fight yesterday when my shirt got sweaty and I had to fight to get it off my, off my head. I never remember. I forget. One of the first fights I was ever in was like in the second and third grade. It was this kid named Sean. Fuck, I hated him. Mm. And he was fucking on top of me, fucking beating the shit out of me. Oh, damn, that sucks. And, and I started screaming that I have poison oak and then I'm going to give it to him. I didn't have poison oak. I just thought that. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That you... <laughs> Is that good? What a great defense. Yeah. What a great defense. Yeah. Oh, man. I went through this phase when I was younger where I just would, like, talk shit. And nobody ever did anything. So I just thought, I like, each time I talked shit and nobody did anything, I thought I got yeah. Like, I got tougher. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, and I'll never forget in the fifth grade, I was doing the same thing. And Brett Gould fucking round back and just boom. <laughs> well, <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> just rocked me. And it was such a shock that like I didn't really do anything because I was like, oh, my gosh, I just got punched. What, what did he do getting. next? Was he scared? He started crying. Yeah, because I fucking there was this kid, Lavario Barnes, that was fucking with me that I had no business fucking with back like in the fourth grade. And I just fucking unleashed holy hell on him. And I got so fucking scared. That's mm -hmm. awesome. He punched you and he cried. He started crying. <laughs> yeah, I was just in shock. I was that kid, too. I would be just fucking psycho and then fucking scare myself. Yeah. And I remember there was like two girls around, but Pam Klein was one of them. And at the time, I had like a crush on her. So I was like, ah, oh, like I looked at her and then she started freaking out. By this time, the yard duty was on top. So then I still got to look tough by being like, oh, what? Like, you know, and then everybody's like, whoa, you seem to take that punch. And really, I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. <laughs> um, uh, I still would cry if I punched someone. 
Hey, I've been in situations, Dan, that I've been in situations a uh, hundred times in my life that would fucking make you shit your fucking pants like a bitch. Like, and, with, and there's, and there would be no threat, but you would be fucking terrified. And I was chill as fuck. I live for the fucking scary moments, or I used to. Were you like an adrenaline junkie with that? No, I just was like, fuck it. I would just go on high alert, and I just like watching just crazy shit go down. You know what I mean? Like, I just hung out in just the most, I mean, you know the Bay Area. I hung out in the most fucking horrible fucking places. Yeah. That's where I, was wondering where I also stood out like a sore thumb, where I, there was no, like, I did not assimilate well. Yeah. Yeah, I was not too. like the white kid that <laughs> pretended to talk black. I was not that kid. No, I was the white kid that pretended he was addicted to crack. <laughs> That's how I survived those those areas. Yeah. Hey, did you think about it consciously at the time that you were in some like hairy situation that you probably put yourself into? Not necessarily saying you wanted to escalate, but you knew going into like this environment or this area or this activity that like no, the my curiosity. Are crazy. No. It, oh, no, my curiosity was so fucking high that I, it, it, I, I was, I was dumb. I was ignorant. Yeah. So that trumped everything else. Yeah. I was just completely ignorant. No, there was no, ba there was no badass in me, but I was just com completely ignorant. Yeah. Well, I didn't feel that there was badass in me either, but as I was putting myself in certain situations, you know, you're like climbing up a drain pipe up a two story roof and I'm like barely at getting over my arm and leg oh, over the top of it. Yeah. I didn't do crazy myself, shit like that. I like, did not do crazy shit What the shit fuck like am I doing? Yeah. Right. And then you get up there and you're up there and you're like, shit. And you look over the side and you realize there's like this two foot gap back to that drain pipe that you have to like reach down and grab and kind of swing your legs yeah, off. And the, the drain side. pipe could just come off the wall at any time. Any time. Right? Any time. You have no idea. Like you. You don't know if it's worse being the first guy up or the last guy up, right? Because like, right, right. You're like, did it just hold for him, or is it gonna, you know, or is it gonna break right away? But I remember. Or what if you had some just fat giant guy go up before you? You're like, fuck, dude. Oh no, you had to be like, I didn't. <sighs> nope. Mm -mm, you had to be fit to run with us. We did that one time with this overweight, like uh Mexican gangster dude that lived down in Oakland, and he was the first dude that tried to run when uh we saw lights. And it was like the classic, like super tough guy. And then all of a sudden there's a situation and it's the first guy that wants to stand up and run, which you never do because it just it immediately gives away your position. And in Oakland or San Francisco, you're like, they're probably not even there for you, right? Um, and he only made it like 50 yards. And then the dude almost had a heart attack and gave away our position and we couldn't do anything <laughs> about it. And you're just like, what the fuck is this? I remember looking over my buddy Richard and just like shook my head and he's like, Sorry, they're like OG Oakland writers. You know, I thought it'd be cool. I'm like, no, the fuck. But yeah, I remember thinking to myself during those times, like, this is going to make a really cool story. And like, my grandpa had cool stories from like World War II and like being on the Hawaiian Island during the Pearl Harbor attack and like these crazy situations. Right. But I was like, man, like, Your he grandfather just was on what island during the Pearl Harbor attack? On Oahu. Oh. Yeah, my, my dad's side of the family is from there. He grew up on Kauai and he lived out in, in Hawaii for a long time. And so it was just like hearing those those stories and stuff like that, um, even though it was super sketchy, terrible situations, it's like he had so many stories. And I remember thinking like, fuck, I don't want to get old and just like not have any stories, you know? And like I was insulated, live in the suburb, like, you yeah. know, yeah. you know, middle class kind of family, not like, you know, a ton going on. And so, yeah, when I would be out there in those situations and it would get sketchy, my mind would immediately go with like, this is going to make one hell of a story later. Hey, did you ever, have you ever been in a car that rolled? That like flipped over? Yeah. No. I never been in wood. that. I never been in that either. Knock on wood. No. I, uh, now, I, I, now I was thinking the other day, um, even just going, the difference between going to a jujitsu tournament for your kids and a tennis tournament is so different. Like, the jujitsu tournament, there's it's just fucking there's just violence everywhere. Yeah. At the tennis tournament, there's zero. And like when you go to the jujitsu tournament, you don't think of it like that. But you know, every tournament I've been at, I've seen medics like basically take some carry someone off, right? Yep. There's yep. some kid who gets his fucking something happens. And um but in, in tennis, it's like the worst thing you see is just some fucking Asian mom fucking yelling at her kids or some, <laughs> or some Jew dad fucking like putting way too much pressure on his daughter. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. And it's funny, too, because everybody inside hey. the building is like trained killers inside your jujitsu tournaments, you know? Right, right. 
Hey, I, I, um, tennis is gay. Tennis is gay, but I bet you that the ratio of straight people to gay people is, is higher at tennis. I bet you there's more gay people who do jujitsu. They're working out some different demons than the tennis crowd. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I bet you there's been a little more diddling. <laughs> Uncle Buck diddling in the jits crowd for sure. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. I know it hurts. I know. But look at, listen, let me tell you, you've never seen more dudes overcompensating or more fucking uh, gay outfits uh, in a jiu-jitsu tournament. <laughs> dude, it, the UFC is just straight gay porn, dude. <laughs> Foreplay. Oh, my gosh. I mean, come on, dude. Conor McGregor's big old fucking cup. <laughs> um, never date a tennis player. Love means nothing to them. Well, that's interesting you say that. I think that the tennis crowd has the, the especially the higher level tennis crowd, something's wrong with them. Yeah, but there, wasn't isn't that a play on words there? Or autism in them. Say that again. It wasn't that a play on words? Like isn't love a tie in tennis? Oh, oh. Well, thank you. Never date tennis love means no oh. Damn. Thank you. Fuck, Susan. But uh but the tennis crowd is a weird crowd. And and it's not a very um the scene is just assholes. Like just going to the tennis, the stressful, most stressful part about going to tennis, like the, the public courts is just the interaction you're going to have with people. there defending their courts or telling you to get off or shit like that. Super pretentious. <clears throat> I apologize for missing the pun. Daniel, Daniel win. <sighs> it's CrossFit gay. Maybe it's it's fifty. It's it, listen. CrossFit's inclusive. You be the judge, Alex. You be the judge. It's so deep. Oh my god, I'm panicking. Uh, yeah, CrossFit's just inclusive. We wouldn't even have those. Oh my gosh. But it's not inclusive to the point where they have the um uh fittest uh, female short stature. That's where we draw the line. All right. Um. I have to pee now. Perfect way to end it. I have to I go to a tax appointment again. Oh. Fuck. Hey, dude, I did a uh, 36 hour fast yesterday or the day before, something like that. Uh, and, yeah. I, and I hadn't done one in months and months and months. Dude, I feel like 50% better as a human being. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah. I should, I should, I should get into that habit as well, too. I felt weak, though. Like uh, yesterday, when yesterday I, Yesterday I ate and I just, I just, I just didn't, I felt weak, not like weak, like as in like tired or lethargic. I had more energy, more focus. I didn't feel like I needed a nap, but I felt, oh, just like when I was in the gym, I just felt, I just didn't feel strong as I mm -hmm. relative to how I normally feel. Mm -hmm. Don't anyone be like, you're not strong anyway. Yeah, I know. You think I should do some burpees today? I'll do a hundred burpees today. Nice. You know what I'll do today, actually, in honor of them? Um, uh, no, the stalking, it immediately went away. It was crazy. Just one day of fasting. I just like everything just fit better all of a sudden. You know what I'm going to do today? Um, I'm going to. Um, I'm going to do five over the bar burpees on the minute for 20 minutes. And I know you're cool. gonna, everyone's going to be like, hey, that's a pussy workout. But I'm just going to work on my technique. Cool. So then I have a greater appreciation for it. Like I'll do, I'll do, um, I'll make sure that they're the kind that they do. You know what I mean? Where you don't stand up all the way and you stand up, you stay in the position like you want it in the ass. Like, like a hamster jumping. The huddled over. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The huddled yep. over. All right. Um, see you guys uh, this evening, 5.30 PM Pacific Standard Time, 4.30, head over to the Barbell Spin. Talk to you guys soon. Do we have any shows on in between now and then? Nope. Oh, okay. Talk to you guys soon. Oh, and who do we have on tomorrow? Is tomorrow Brooke Ends? Oh, and tomorrow we have Brooke Ends. That's going to be awesome. All right, cool. <clears throat> uh, bring your wallets this evening.